To enjoy this and other great episodes on Patreon, check out the link in the description and subscribe via the Black Kluge tier for full access to over 100 exclusive episodes. For those of you who would like some QF swag on TeePublic t-shirts, magnets, mugs, what have you, also click on the link in the description. I can't tell you how many uh, times I've held Jan out. And Jan, don't invite me to your apartment anymore, cocksucker. The big fag parties. Motherfucker sitting there with his goddamn caterer. I'm done with you. Fuck not. Oh, no. Well, guess what? Jan, I'm never having sex with you. <laughs> and your handsome boyfriend. I've oh. entertained your no offense, children. Hey, Vinny, how am I like her? Okay, you ready? Yeah. I, I mean, shame this is, on you. This is like that Kennedy... Bye on you. No. <laughs> You're both divorced. Okay. You're both living apart from your kids. <laughs> you both had three kids. Yeah. You both talk into a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were both um, in your 40s. I mean, she was in her 40s. Uh -huh. your age now. You both battled CBS over money. Uh -huh. okay? <laughs> you were both mentally abused by parents. Yeah. Both of you see psychiatrists. Oh, <laughs> psychoanalysis. I've only been here three years. Uh, uh, I hope you don't get as much out of it as she did. Yeah. I think <laughs> both of you like your wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, both of you could play sports. Yeah. Judy hung with gays, and, and you hung out with Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you of all people who treat people like shit after Bullshit. they give you a gift? Are you kidding me? I, I, no, are you kidding? You know what I do? I have a special book. I open. Dude, you didn't even touch. You haven't. You, 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 you my twelve hundred dollar Neil Young gift that you no, I told spit you. in I my you face. Gave it to me. No, no, bullshit. You're, you're the worst one. Did I write you a note? Did I write you a bullshit time where you're no. trying to fuck with me? No. You are the rudest gift receiver of the fucking time. I have a book. No. On the air, we, sit, you. we have fun. $1,200 fucking picture. It's in a storage bin. On the air. Yeah, you love rubbing in my face. We, on the Go air. Go fuck yourself. Well, then let me respond to that. On the air, we kid each other. But the fact of the matter oh, is. Oh, yeah, this is on the air. I created a new bit. Go ahead. 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 Go I write down everyone who gives Somebody me Somebody else should do this bit because you're not allowed to. You're the worst as, gift as receiver of all bullshit. fucking time. Bullshit. You see, you're going to keep interrupting me because that's your shtick. No, but that's not my shtick. It's your shtick. I make you're sure You're a rude prick with gifts. No, liar. You're the rude prick. The I have a, a book with everybody. I know name. you got me nothing for Christmas. It's you, like everybody else here. I, got, I, I just spent I just spent about 20 grand on your party. Fuck you. I knew the 20 grand was coming. Yeah. I, I, I got really found out. And he made yeah, well, I don't, I don't know a guy who's ever left here that has left on a good note, no matter oh, what. Sure sure yeah, have. like who? Scott Can Onziger. Ask a no, Ask a Scott Onziger didn't leave. He left on a great note. We were oh. still friends. No. Welcome, ladies and gents, once again to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me for round two of Drew Lang, or Lang Drew, I can't remember how I put it on the Photoshop, is Mr. Len Young. How are you, sir? Good to have you I'm back. I'm good. I'm good. Good to be back again. And uh, do you have any uh, words of uh, praise? Well, actually, it's, it's already going to be uh, after the fact, well after the fact. But do you have any uh, um, compliments to, to, to hand to the Shuley's Anonymous uh, thread or anybody that enjoyed listening to your dulcet tones on your maiden voyage on uh, QF on the, um, on the YouTube channel? Yeah, I had a look through the comments and I guess no news is good news. <laughs> I wasn't called out specifically, so that's probably a good thing. That's as good as I could hope for. <laughs> One called you a limey, though, and I, I had to leave it there because it yeah, was too stupid. That, yeah, the... <laughs> yeah, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep over that one. That's about. Uh, that's probably the most offensive thing you can call me, actually. No kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, do 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 me a favor. <laughs> he must be in cuckoo land yeah. <laughs> anyway guys we're going to go into part two of drew lang and uh, the, the video we're going to get, get a lot more of this done uh because number one we have a lot to get through second of all there's no need for a preamble because you've already listened to part one we hope you did enjoy it so here we go Oh, you've got something going on there. With I, 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 yeah, he, no, Drew's got it. I honestly pegged. think that you rot away in the ground. I think my father is a bunch of bones right now. Yeah, but every minute That's you That's your logical I, voice. Uh, we're talking about what's deep in your subconscious. Artie, almost uh, every other page of your book is, thank God the angels are watching me. This guy's I'll an angel. I'll go to a page right an now, random. It has no angels. There's right. angels. <laughs> but, but here's the deal. Remember, yeah. he's, Fuck, a, that's he, angel. he's a heroin addict. <laughs> so, so everything's bullshit. He's right. capable of anything. bullshit. You do bullshit me all the time. 
got to cultivate the word whatever, right? Which is just whatever. It, it, he there's yeah. there's a piece here. We know the problem is he, all, bullshit all, 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 all the psychological the stuff we're talking call. about is 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 taken advantage of by heroin. Right. So in other words, all every piece of insight that we find here, the disease will find as a reason to use. Yeah. So in other words, and, you're saying right now he doesn't have a structure around him. He doesn't have he a sponsor. The, yes, he doesn't he have a guy to talk to. And so what I was... Is there some, a guy you know who doesn't have a TV hang show? On, hang on. Yeah, I do. <laughs> 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 gets me every time <laughs> it just goes back to that one great chord that always like it, it just keeps hitting home um one thing i got to say outright is it's ironic that drew's trying to conduct this as if it's some kind of uh, not an intervention but definitely some kind of psychiatric examination when he has no qualifications to do so really mm. uh and second of all he's doing it at a place where Artie has absolutely enabled the worst in his life yeah yeah outside of, outside of his stand-up gigs where you know there'll be all kinds of enablers you know a normal you know stick comedy club just hangers on and de general miscreants will get you whatever potions you need to get through the light get to get through the night and what have you the stern show not only enabling this but encouraging it for airtime and and just using it to no fucking end yeah and, uh, and the problem is he didn't uh already didn't ask for this and no. also his job is to be funny Mm -hmm. So he's sitting there and he knows that he doesn't want to, first of all, talk about it. And second of all, he knows it's not going to be entertaining for him to be pouring, uh, you know, pouring his heart out. He's trying to make jokes. Um, but I would say that there's a couple of things you, you start to see here is that Howard and Drew start to look at each other and just pretend Artie's not in the room. And mm -hmm. that just that seems to just get worse and worse. It's a yeah. bit like parents are discussing a child as they're screaming on the ground having a tantrum they're just ignore trying to block it out or some uncle that's in there who has dementia and doesn't realize yeah, you know, you're talking yeah. about him yeah and later the only <laughs> the one good thing about this well there's many good things but there's one that I, one part that i really like was when they go he goes after robin and already says something like doesn't feel so good does it honey <laughs> sweetie <laughs> yeah 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 i think i think drew kind of calls her out on the um you know, he drew kind animals. of questions the science of having a liter of coffee up your ass. Yeah, he just <laughs> kind of questions it. <laughs> Dark roasted shits. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure it's lukewarm. Yeah. Right, you, yeah that's right. You got to you got to find a spot. Some of you can trust. Some of you're not paying. Right. The fact is. In the short term, digging into too much of this stuff will make him want to use. Right. So too much talk therapy now is a bad idea. Ah. So he the talk ah, therapy see, will come in that. the talk therapy may come in three to six months. <laughs> right. He needs to just f and stay sober in the meantime. So you're and saying I'm not thinking, I'm not sponsor, thinking clearly. Sponsor, sponsor, sponsor meetings, uh, people that have been recovered. You you be you know you're a great recovering person. Right. So you you, you feel uh, of course the, the the AA 12 steps is. I wish the there were other ways, but that works. Come on. Right. I don't know. I've never been in AA, but um, I've had friends who've been in it, actually, at least at one point or another in their lives. And I remember Toby Maguire uh, did an interview with Playboy magazine in 2003, roughly around the Spider-Man years. And he got in shit because he discussed AA in the magazine. And the the A part is anonymous. Of course, you're not mm. supposed to say that you're a member and they don't want people saying that because years ago some i think it was it might have been even a famous person advertised they were in aa got fucked up and it ruined they thought it ruined the whole objective of the organization not understanding that look they're human people will relapse unfortunately but it gave them a bad stay it gave them some bad publicity i think and which is why they really want to keep it as anonymous as possible but he did he mentioned that he didn't like the fact that it was very um he felt it was very uh, male dominated, uh, not male dominated, but very, a little sexist, the language, and also uh, the, too much emphasis on religion. Yeah. But yeah, I, I always said, that. reading through it, you could substitute religion for just about any deity or any kind of goal you really want and focus, use that as your, as your, whatever you're praying to. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know much about AA, but I, what I do, I, I, this is probably what Drew is referring to here is that you do at some point have to give yourself over to a, a higher power, whatever that is in your head. Sure. And I suppose it depends on the personality of the of, of the person involved. They may have an issue with that. And they may some people may want to take everything into their own hands and have full control over their 
their their life, and that that can be a stumbling block for people in AA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think there's yeah. also a thing where you have to. You have to like phone. Is it is the area where you have to phone up everyone who you make amends lie to and make amends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Robin, there was a point after she got back from her cancer surgery that Robin was doing something like that, but it wasn't AA. It was Landmark Forum, and she decided. But it was it was really a ruse, in my opinion, to try to because she was trying to get Grillo and Casey and Jackie to join Landmark Forum. Um, because she went under the pretense of, oh, I've been, you know, horrible to you. I've, you know, I've, uh, been a, a bad friend or this, that, and the other thing. And it, it was just under, it was just, it was complete nonsense and they could all sniff yeah. it out. And they said, no, no, you don't, she's, if you're going to apologize, apologize, but don't bring up your cult. She's all over the place. Uh, yeah. Robin came in. I remember Robin came in one day. This is when I was listening and she just had this mantra about, I'm I'm demasculating you. I'm I'm demasculating everyone. Yeah, I mustn't I mustn't demasculate. And she, she that just was kept, it. She kept saying, "Oh, was that it?" I believe she so. Kept saying, she kept saying it. Then she came in one day and she said, "Salt is is everything has salt in it. You should you should never have salt in anything. Salt is the worst thing for you." Then she cheated on the marathon. She said, "I needed salt after the marathon, so I ate two Chinese meals." Why don't you drink electrolyte powder then? <laughs> You have to eat Chinese food. That's the mar- that's the marathon runner's diet. I remember a bagel on, during the marathon and Chinese yeah. afterwards. Your uh, your like bowels will thank you. Well, yeah, it's like shit. Then uh, a breeze block after that. Dude, I did. I I I walked something like forty six kilometers one day, and uh, that's the longest in in not once like in stages, but it was in the process of twenty four hours. I and even though I was I was hydrating like hydrating like a motherfucker, I finished off five six. A liter and a half Gatorade bottles during the course of the thing, but it was the dead of summer. By the time I got back home, I was almost seized up completely, like a like a a, a stick yeah. of beef jerky, beef jerky, and I couldn't move my fingers. They had cr- yeah. they'd p- gone together, and I said to my wife, "Get me some whatever to drink, all the sports drinks you can." And after about 15, 20 minutes, it started getting better. But I was I was so scared, I didn't realize that's dehydration working. Sure is, yeah, and uh, a lot of people. I think a lot of people think that water you need to drink kind of some people are really I work with people and they they are constantly drinking water mm-hmm. and they some one guy was saying oh I drink you know four or five liters a day <clears throat> if you're just sitting in an office the danger there is that you're actually going to flush out electrolytes you're going to end up with electrolyte imbalance because you just pissed it all out of your body so pretty much yeah yeah but that's something robin would do it's just this extreme she could never she could never just moderate yeah. it's always a you know some no new way. fad that she picks up somewhere right like if a, if a coffee enema works great on my ass why don't i put it in my ears you know <laughs> like you know like if one hole is good six are better you, you're like the, this is like this I, don't, is, I mean i don't tend to love i've been to a meetings just, uh, just all go over the country go. actually I know. and i i i don't tend to love those hey, i know but uh, just go but, to you yeah. want to well, go well i have a deal with Artie. Yeah. if he fails his first drug test i've already picked the date of his drug test but he can't know the date no, yeah he okay. doesn't know right, it. don't right. worry <laughs> It no, should I be every know. other day or so. I what, don't know. What are you yeah, waiting for? Why there's a special a little, day. Yeah. Should you it's it's random. Ready. It's random. It's random drug testing. Right, I'll do whatever the fuck you want. It should be regular. Dr- he doesn't know, and Gary's going to watch his penis in the cup. No, Go he's ahead. not. Yes, he is. No, yes, he is. Then yeah, then I, has somebody has to. He'll bring out a wiz in there. Then I'm not doing it. Then you got to walk in the room naked. Then I quit. God, he's been trying to get look at Artie naked since he was at the house and tried to get in on his door and already locked it smartly. Yeah. Um, and this is, you notice there that already suddenly when they talk about witnessing the, the, uh, his penis or at least mm-hmm. the, the, the urine the sample, actor. he yeah. just, so that you could argue, well, it's just that he doesn't want anyone to see his penis, but also he, he had in his head, which we know he did. He paid mm-hmm. a guy for, for, for fake urine. piss. Yeah. Yep. So he obviously had that gone through his head and now his plan is punctured. So he's very, getting very defensive. Yeah, it's interesting it, to see all this after the fact. It, the only the, the real problem I had with Crash and Burn the book. Have you read it, by the way? I have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I read it. I think the the e version, like the the e like an EPUB or whatever it was. Mm. And um, the only thing I don't like is that he good, doesn't go deep enough into the stern, like the chronology of when he mm. was going through stuff, and then exactly how. He he brings up se- like some some points of the t- the time when he was there, but not enough of it. And he also doesn't go into really the more of the anger of why 
he he you know had to do this i don't think he's being honest with himself in that book about you know they wouldn't let me make beer league it was uh, he he did say yes i was a little angry at howard but mostly i was angry at myself don't lie you were angry about you were angry at howard and you just didn't want to say it. it's a, it's his fault he doesn't want to close the door shut the door permanently i think no if way. he was to write that book now it would be different you get more of a reality a uh, real picture. I, like I if, so. if you think back on that book, he 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 went into detail about. Uh, now I haven't. It's ten years since I read mm-hmm. it, but mm-hmm. I do remember he talked about being on. Uh, this it's an awful story about being on a private jet, and he did a shit that absolutely stunk out the plane, and he's mm-hmm. sitting there. I wondered what was the point of that. It was just so humiliating. Uh, maybe it was that was part of why he why he included that, and, the, and there was another one about being in the Playboy Mansion with Teddy, where his pants ripped, his pants and he ripped, bombed, yeah, and yeah, real, um, real humiliating stuff in it. I guess it was just to lay it all out there in, yeah. in, in an attempt to show this is not only did I drug myself up, not only did I bomb, I also <laughs> fouled a plane with shit. Uh, every aspect of my life that should have been wonderful, I was it was made shit by me or through you know the the hand of fate. Um, and addiction, what have you. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the goal was, but he certainly did. It did read like that picture of him in Rolling Stone that they published the, in, the, in that, uh, Vanessa Grigoriadis, uh, article that, mm. uh, that he ended up bitching and saying, oh, it was a fucking hit piece. And that, yeah. that wasn't a hit piece, dude. You just didn't like the fact that all of this information was out there and it made you look like a complete wreck. Yeah, it really did. I, I think back in that time when he how, when he when Hardy was using I, I think in the, when he looked in the mirror he saw Belushi you know whereas we saw just a, a slob and someone mm-hmm. who lost lost all his um his prowess in terms of his knowing when to come in and he was trampling over everyone he was yeah uh, he does mention in the book that the Joe book appearance he was on cocaine yeah and then so you he, mentioned that, about the weight loss that, that had to be a good chunk of it, like sped up metabolism, you know, during that time when he looked physically better for a while there. Yeah. And that's this period here. You can see he actually does look quite healthy here. Um, well, reasonably. Fat. Yeah. But compared to what he looked like towards the end of the year of this mm-hmm. year, he oh. became very uh, pale and very ashen faced. Oh. But here he's, he's got, he's got, he's got, I don't know what he's, he must have been getting sun somewhere, but. He's definitely on something here. Whatever. He, just, he, he had just come back from Miami, remember? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, you have to walk in naked Not because naked. you're going to get a bag of urine in there. You're, you're I'm going to get a bag of urine in your yeah. pants. Where am I going to get a bag? Yeah, yeah. We'll buy it. <laughs> You could frisk me before you, I go in. People buy urine to pass drug tests. You seen the Wizenator? It's a fake penis with a bladder. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't have the Wizenator on. Sure I don't have you don't. Your it's, it's, Where do I have it? <laughs> you don't think you think it's ridiculous for us to think that you might try to beat a drug test? Uh, yeah, that you well, wouldn't pay I, Teddy I, for I, his urine or something? Uh, Teddy's not. Teddy's I'm just not, saying. I'm giving you. Teddy's you, urine is way too. You expensive. know a bunch of people. You you throw money at everything. Then we'll have a girl. I don't know one person who doesn't do drugs or drink. Where am I getting urine I, from? These guys are tired of you. I'm trying. I feel like getting behind you, like defending <laughs> this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no the, kidding. I'm, you see you, how I'm attacked but every you, day. But you burned everybody out, man. You, no, but, I you, you must have done no, some stomp here. What do you everybody. mean? What have I done? We've agreed. What have I, done? I drew something at Dr. somebody Drew. Else. Dr. Yeah. Drew. Yeah. We've agreed if he fails the drug test, he goes to the rehab of his sister's choosing, and his sister's Good. a ball buster. Good. Um, she's not a ball she, No, she's in a good way. Person. Yeah. Uh, she will choose the rehab. Perfect. He has to be no, there. I, mean, I have some rehab. recommendations. For Thank him, you. So, yeah. At least 28 days. In fact, I've got a great one of mine for him. Who do you have? I just hate the fact that they're making it seem like some fucking knitting circle. And, uh, you know, it's a real serious thing. And they should not even yeah. be discussing this on the fucking air. That's why a lot yeah. of people got took offense at this. And they should have because you're making it into content instead of this is stuff that you should be doing off the fucking air. Course, and already doing yeah. doing what you like this is definitely like obviously this is post bro fight but you could hear the anger in this in yeah. the angry sarcasm and throughout the whole episode he's like really fuck drew and fuck you too so just stern yeah stern stern loves this because he's he's there's a uh i suppose there's an in inferred superiority here it's you're the one with the problem Marty, and we're just trying to help you and there's a bit of gaslighting oh. and then even even what what drew is saying here oh i got a great rehab what like what is your buddy's rehab are you getting the back end? <laughs> like this is this is not how you um practice uh you know 
I don't know what the worst will suppose rehab or rehabilitation or even a kind of an intervention where you're sitting around. You're not talking about uh, restaurants or, you know, oh, I got a great rehab. Really? Yeah. You know, it's it, there's just something about this that, again, like I probably said in the last episode, it's uh, the tail wagging the dog a bit here and it yeah. doesn't doesn't sit right with me at all. Well, it's disingenuous. And the other thing yeah. is, of course, that um, it, you're, we're already feeling shitty at this point in 2009 for already the way he's acting, uh, mm. the way all this behavior with like within the, you know, the compound, um, the the not showing up because when he didn't every time it didn't show up, it was a shittier show. But when oh, he was yeah. there, there was a chance of it being funny, even though he torpedoed that a lot that year as well. And the yeah. following year, a little bit by just stepping all over people. But but without him there was almost no guarantee it was going to be a good show. There was a, there was a guarantee it was never going to be a good show when he was out and he was out so often you got to thinking like, dude, come on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it, it was, a, it was a flavor of what things would be like in 20, 2010 onwards where Howard would just open up the show and you would have 15 minutes about how he, uh, wiped his ass. Well, you know, yeah. Which, well, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> well, th- those days, man, the, the, it's, 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 it's ironic. 2009 is the time I started getting into podcasts more because mm-hmm. maybe 2008, even because on those days I like, I would go through Mark's frig and just looking for stuff. If it was anything in there worth clipping the oh, 90 to 95, 96, 7% of the time, there was nothing there worth keeping, not a phony mm-hmm. phone call, not an interview, nothing. Yeah, the phony phone call. Like, I remember Richard and Sal around 2000 and, what was it, 2008. They 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 struck gold with the Tradio thing. And then they just, that's all they did for six months, I think, was just Tradio calls. Now, some of them were good, but that's all they did. Um, like like, and, like hacks do, they beat it into the yeah, ground. They, like, they beat it yeah. like it owes the money. <laughs> who does that remind us of? <laughs> Come on, Springbrook in Portland. Okay, maybe like forty grand. It, it's I'm sure it's not cheap, but you need to stay there. Is it out in the wilderness, away from a Four Seasons? <laughs> and it's nice. There's it's a beautiful. Four Seasons in Portland. I'd say that. Talbot great. down Atlanta. Portland, Maine, or Portland, Anything Oregon? Anything else we should be doing? We're going to do the drug test. Portland, Maine, or Portland, Oregon? You shouldn't expect him. You know, don't, <laughs> uh, don't. You, you guys beat him up pretty good. Oh you know? my God, it's <laughs> terrible. Can you stay here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and there are the things, cameras here. You'll be covered. One of the things I get from, from everybody is they get. You guys get mad when he lies. Just, just go whatever when he lies. I don't get mad. Yeah. Okay, good. I do. See, I, you know, Gary, you're right. Right. I get, I get really upset. Gary, Gary felt betrayed. Gary, 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 I have to talk Gary down. I, I sit there and I go, listen. This is who Artie is. Yeah. Artie comes to work. Stop busting his fucking balls. Yeah. And I said, Gary, why are you getting so hurt? This right. is Artie's problem. Not you were- wow. Like, okay. That, like, you don't need to hear too much more of that, guys. But you're going to hear it mm-hmm. throughout that year, the following year, the previous year. Not just them making fun of his, his uh, you know, his, his answering machine calls to Gary. Gary, I think, does care about uh, Artie. But he's too much of a pussy to just exercise authority that he doesn't have anyway and he doesn't have the balls to stand up to howard saying no he should be off the show this is ridiculous this is ridiculous you don't think johnny carson's producers wouldn't have said to him which they wouldn't need to because johnny would know when someone was being out of line and he'd ax them from the show ever future appearances again Bowie is caught between a rock and a hard place because he knows already shouldn't be on the show in this condition um and i'm sure he feels guilty on some level but then he also feels like well, what am I supposed to do? My hands are tied. The The boss doesn't give a fuck. So I'm not allowed to. Yeah. And and I think after the trip to Afghanistan, things between Artie and Gary definitely changed. Uh, Big time. Not, for the, not, not, not for the better. I think uh, Gary saw a really dark side to, of Artie on that trip that he didn't, you, you wouldn't see uh, Monday to Friday or Monday to Wednesday in the studio. So, um, yeah, I think one by one, Artie kind of just eventually burnt every bridge but it just goes to show how important he was uh, i wonder when i don't know but i think you've covered it when he tried to get time off to film beer league and and stern yep. was like a dog with a bone uh, he just yep. wouldn't he, he wouldn't he say really yes. made yeah uh, is that because of a, a an insecurity or was it because howard knew he'd have to work much harder during those days 
It was a control issue. He didn't want for mm. it was a couple multiple things. I think he was, he just didn't want him getting ahead, even though this really wasn't getting ahead. It was an independent project, and it wouldn't have as it it ended up doing nothing for him. I think in the end, it just was an extra bit of swag to sell sell on your website and and this and the other thing, and then also maybe to see what it's like to produce something like that and be mm. in charge of something for a change. I I, I give Artie credit for trying it out at least, but mm. um. But I think he just didn't want to, he wanted to keep him uh, on his toes. Like, no, I, I want you to feel that your job's at stake here if you just decide mm, to make a, yeah. an executive decision and leave regardless, because I'll give you some shit. And so passive aggressively, he was saying, yeah, you can leave if you want, but if you do, there are going to be consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he took time off for entourage as well. Mm -hmm. A couple of days, maybe. That was but it. I can't think of anything else. No, rescue me, and then the, me, the, okay. the, the William Shatner roast he was out there for, and he came in late that day, or the I think it was late that day, yeah, maybe like the last hour of the show because the plane had been delayed okay. or traffic was delayed. But uh, and then uh, then he's even then Art Howard shit on him saying like I'm not. He spent an hour talking about the roast about how Farrah Fawcett was drugged up and mm -hmm. he dicked it a bit that was cut from the final broadcast because it tanked so badly. He dressed as Spock, I remember. Yeah. He was just he turned yeah. into a bumper. <laughs> Eddie Griffin turned into a bumper. Um, the uh, he did an hour, and then he says, "I don't hear many great stories." Afterwards, what you, you just killed an hour of your fucking show with his with his visit out there. So, as as opposed to Howard's stories about his weekend, yeah, picking peanuts out of his own shit, you fucking ass. <laughs> uh, the the other thing the other thing is, of course, here, and I don't mean to slow this up too much, guys. Um, Artie is so against so the other thing it was about Bowie I had in my mind and I'm sure I mentioned it before on the show Bowie releases in 2010 they call me Baba Bowie the book um then there's a paperback version and what's the extra bit he puts in there the chapter about Artie in Afghanistan that doesn't exist in the hardback it only exists when he has something else he wants to flog the paperback edition why wouldn't you include it to begin with in the first place? Because you know it doesn't make him look good. But now he's off. Well, uh, well, actually, no. He was already off the show in 2010. But to sell books, you needed Artie and exploiting him and his drugness, drug issues, whatever. Now that he's off completely off the show and there's no chance of him coming back, you think this is acceptable? Even though it well, was on the air, I don't agree. I think it was a shitty move on Bowie's part. If the book came out in 2010, there's a very good chance it was written in 2009 or, or beforehand. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing yeah. that there's a good, there's a high probability that's the case. And that would mean that once Artie was off the show, Bowie thought, now I can stick the boot in. Uh, that... I, I, whether, what, it was either that or, you know, I need something to sell it. And that's the only thing yeah. I can think of that will, that's not going to bother Howard because Artie's long gone now and he doesn't want him back. Yeah, I mean, look at it, you, in that book. He doesn't say anything negative about anyone on the show, apart no. from Artie. Is that it, it calls awful. Howard a great father? You know? <laughs> I haven't read deep enough. I'll have to get the PDF and, and or the you know whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not paying money for it, but I'll find a copy and I'll I'll check that out. That's that's something I'll have to see that in print. Fuck's sake. What the you, last time you admitted it on the air, right, Artie wasn't all you here can do, when you said really, it. Really, all you can do is pray for, for Artie. I do. I pray, I pray for, for, for the best. He says hey. it in, in his forward for the book. He says, say a prayer for him. Howard, yeah. no joke. For the drug test, I don't know wacky, <laughs> but Lisa G said she would look at Artie's dick in the cup. Good. That's right. Is it okay if Lisa yeah, G yeah. goes in? My go. dick's out, if it. my dick's out in the same room with Lisa G, it's going in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> How much urine can she hold? That's fair. <laughs> and you could, you could dump the urine out of her. <laughs> I'll piss in her mouth, and then uh, you could turn uh, her over. Dr. Drew no, here. Could, could, could Lisa so G want to see, could Lisa, time, right? could Lisa G want to see you my cock any worse? You know, I didn't agree with the for 10 years. <laughs> wow. Oh, Christ. Simpler times. Different yeah. times. Different times. Yeah. Big time. I, I know. Stopped. All right. Okay. So I'm used so to this stuff. That's so. the Artie story. What, what do you say? He's, He's used for 10 to you. So, Dr. Drew. You did a smart thing. When you started in radio yeah. with Love Lines, you didn't even take a salary. There was no money for you. No, I first? was. I thought I was doing community service. Right. I mean, so, I, I, you know, I just just that, that, that was back in the days of 
of AIDS education. I always thought it was important for young people to hear about that. So when you started a radio, it wasn't even like a money-making proposition no. for you. You I, were just going on there, hanging out, and then... The I'm sure he did it out of the kindness of his heart. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, Same and he's, through. And he's a volunteer executive producer of Sober House, or Sobriety yeah. House, right? Sober House. Yeah. Or is it sober? Yeah. <laughs> it's Exploitation House. <laughs> exploitation House. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Show got popular and it became a profession for you, right? Exactly. Yeah, took, it's took pretty cool. Years and years later, it, it, and it, it sort of always was something I was very passionate about. So it was very fun. It was very cool to do that. Right. So you when know. you came up with the celebrity rehab, thing, I didn't come was, up with that. Oh, who I, came so, up a with producer that? came up with that, and and they came to me, and I was like, well, this will never happen. No, of course, no way. because there's no way a celebrity yeah. will come on. Not only that, and you I, still haven't gotten a celebrity on there. What I, <laughs> <laughs> It is true. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it can be Steven Adler. That's the funny thing. This is a guy that I don't think he exists past what the Guns N' Roses EP, like the second, the second thing that lies that they released. And yeah, then he he's replaced outright. He played on Appetite for Destruction. Right. And I think he played on uh, Lies, which was the acoustic record, wasn't it? But that's yeah, it. it yeah, and that, because they got the drummer, uh, Matt Sorum came in for the double album they made, the guy from the that's right. Yeah. So he's gone by that stage. Who, by the way, a friend of mine <laughs> saw him at the whiskey in LA and said he might have been one of the biggest assholes I've ever seen in my life. Though he, 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 he was <laughs> such a diva on stage. But then he also met Sebastian Bach from Skid Row and said he could not have been cooler. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, no. Yeah, I saw him recently. Man, he looks... He looks, uh, he looks old, Sebastian. He's, <laughs> all those beers, I think, are catching up with him. I think so, but he's like, a, I think he's from Hamilton. I'm not 100% sure, but he's a, if he's if he's from the Hammer, they're all pretty down to earth guys. I mean, uh, there was um, there's a Canadian band, Teenage Head, rest in peace, Frankie Venom and Gordon Lewis. God, they just passed away. Uh, Frankie, the lead singer, passed away a long time ago, but he was up there with Iggy as one of the best front men in the history of wow. music. Just just music, not even rock or punk, or whatever. It's super hardcore rock and roll. I, I think I sent you a couple links, but. They were, uh, but they were, they were loved by every scene across the country. Like they were mm -hmm. that, they were just that, you know, popular because people love the music as well at any yeah. rate. Um, but, uh, you know, Matt, so yeah, uh, Steven Adler was there. Um, what the, what's the, what's the guy who played Kanicki in Greece? Um, God, he was on the show too. Jeff Conaway. Jeff Conaway, who, you know, was more famous, I think for t working on taxi, which was, you know, a lifetime yeah, he was ago also at that point. Yeah, he was also in Babylon Five, the, the yes, sci-fi right. show in the nineties. Yeah, wow, that's that's actually not bad when you consider a lot of those people don't get gigs past their initial success. Yeah, by that stage he was heavily, heavily addicted to painkillers. So when yeah. he was shooting Babylon Five, he wasn't. Wow. Uh, he was in a bad way during the, the the making of that, I believe. Wow. Well, either way, uh, he agreed to be on it and a few other people. Tawny Katane, who was really just famous for, what, fucking a jaguar on on, on screen for uh, White Snake? White Snake, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> Mike Starr. You, yeah, Mike Starr. Oh, God. Jeez, Mike Starr. <laughs> the, oh, there was, um, who was the was guy a, who, oh, you know the guy, he's a head case with the, the, the Buddy Holly story and he had a motorcycle accident. Oh, Gary Boosie. Gary, Gary Boosie was in it. Yeah, yeah. Andy Dick. Well, yeah, Andy, Andy, and Andy Dick, <laughs> Andy Dick needs to start his own version of AA where like, it's just, it's not Alcoholics Anonymous, it's just Alcoholics <laughs> because <laughs> he's never giving it up. Like that guy no. cannot see, he cannot seem to stay out of uh, trouble. The latest one was that Elisa Jordana, the one who was with Benji, oh, who yeah. lied about her age pretty much. She was in Play Playboy and stuff. Um, and she, he he got beat up and they made it like, Oh, people assaulted him, whatever. And it looked like some kind of attempt to get him go fund me money. The same way mm -hmm. Corey Feldman was trying to raise money for his documentary, his big expose on Charlie Sheen, which a disgraced Charlie Sheen that no one gave a fuck about. And I think mm -hmm. no one cared that it was Corey Feldman telling the story. That was the biggest problem. Yeah. I'll put, yeah. Andy Dick is a, is at this point is, is a last case. And I hate to say he's in the same, probably in the same category as Artie, although at least Artie seems to be at least, um, in some kind of stable state at the moment, which is out of showbiz entirely and out of, um, like, but Andy Dick, like you say, he's on TMZ every six months. 
Yeah. Um, which at least already has managed to stay out of the headlines. Yeah, to his credit, I mean, I I really do, unfortunately, keep thinking the shoe is going to fall off the other foot and it's going to be, you know, already in drug court again or already arrested or whatever. And I'm like, it's one of those situations where if you don't hear about him, you're really happy that he's not yeah. in the worst in the papers in the worst way. So yeah. it's sad. We wish we, you know, we, we don't want him to go the way of, you know, Boo Radley, but maybe it's the best for him. I think it is. Yeah. We're call home, it home Reed. I swear you, to God. You should call it don't rehab. break us through. See, you're hoping I relapse, right? Because I'll be I on your not, fruity I'm show. Let me tell you something. <laughs> don't you have enough money? How much is enough? Wait, <laughs> they came to me, and I, I, I what people don't understand is there are there – are, <laughs> The licensing and malpractice and and sort of the these sort of uh, procedural issues around this were profound. I just thought no way, and we found, and a friend of mine had ran a hospital and he said we could step in, inject a program and use their policies and procedures, their license, and I never imagined we'd find that. Wow! And so that, that the people. So I think if we can translate what he's saying there. He's using a bit of technical language in this when we can inject a program. What he's essentially saying is we found a loophole. We found a legal loophole that allows us to do this. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's what it, that's what the way it comes across to me. When he talks about, oh, we can't possibly do that. It's not because we can't possibly, there's an ethical issue around it. He, he's talking about we can't legally do it. We, I would if I could. Right. And then so a friend of his figured out, no, there's a way we can do it and have and not be um, exposed uh, legally down the road. We can mm-hmm. protect ourselves legally. Here's yep. a method. Here's a way we can do it. Now, maybe which I'm wrong, which I don't know. Well, it was also sounded like a money thing, like, well, we don't even have to fucking provide the, yeah. the structure of the facility. Just, we can yeah. just go yeah. into the, you know, Arizona state, whatever general hospital, or whatever, or wherever it was. I can't remember where the, where the thing was held, but either way, they're going to provide us with the facilities and all we have to do is film there. And like, what hospital puts the green light on this? Cause you I really need to I see Kanicki up close, drunk, yeah. falling over yeah. some st- bush. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, because we, a hospital is going to say, well, this is, you know, are you making an entertainment show? Or are we trying to get people off drugs? What, which, which is, which is it? Well, well you can imagine the, you can imagine the pitch he'd make to the hospital saying like, of yeah, well, this is, uh, this is all going to be above board. And this is, you know, we're all going to be taking full responsibility and maintain the anonymity. But if you give them a wing of the, the, the hospital, let's say it's in disuse or um, it, it's, they don't need it. It's a too large of a facility and not enough staff anyway, then boom, boom, we're killing a couple birds with one stone. Um, yeah, I, but I, I don't know that you really want the notoriety if things go bad, though. Well, I, I looked up Drew a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't call it research. I'd call it just Googling his name, right? But yeah, sure. I, in, in, in 2013, he went, he, there's a few articles out, he went public and he said, I'm never going to make Celebrity Rehab again, ever. Okay. And he said, the reason why is because I'm sick of taking heat for all the five people who died. Oof. So... So it, the reason why he's not doing it again is not because uh, those people died or there was an ethical issue around the show or it was it was manipulative. It was because I look bad. That was yes. that was what he was upset about. He was sure. upset at the d- damage that it did to his uh, to his his public image. I mean, so this gives you an insight into the way this guy's head works. Now, fast forward to twenty twenty one, he's trying to get the show back on again. Mm-hmm. So he's already trying to get the band back together. That guy, Bob Forrest, was on the show. He was in that band, uh, Thelonious Monster. Do you remember them? Yes, yes. And uh, there was someone else who was on the show. He's trying to get them all back. So I don't know who he's who he's eyeing up now. Um, <laughs> he's he's, but, uh, he's looking up Deadpools online everywhere and seeing what 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 where, where exactly, he can, what yeah. names he could get. Yeah, it's awful. Andy um, Dick, I'm sure. Well, Andy Dick's a perpetual name on there. He's like Keith Richards. You know, he's just not going to go away. It looks like <laughs> if, Keith, if Keith Richards, you know, uh, had, you know, less skill on the guitar, I suppose. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, you're, you're right. But, but again, he also got, like I said, in trouble uh, with the co early on with COVID and he got in trouble for sponsoring, you know, pills, which really not the thing, not the kind of thing the, uh, uh, AMA really wants as you know, I mean, who was it? P- <laughs> no, it wasn't Pinsky. It was uh, Ablo <laughs> who ended up at this S and M fiend losing his practice in yeah. uh, you know two states or wherever he was. He was legally uh, able to practice, and now is a consultant. 
you know, when he goes on these shows, I'm a consultant, yeah. no longer a doctor anymore, whatever, uh, or, you know, and, and licensed uh, psychiatrist or psychologist. And he, the, nobody wants that stank on their organization. Nobody. No, uh, I think I might have mentioned it on the last episode, but uh, um, Ablo made some really uh, controversial comments. He did go, I suppose, off the deep end on Fox News. He was a regular contributor on there. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I think there was some issue around, um, he was Me too as well, was he? There was a little of that. It was uh, trying to basically subvert the the will of some of his patients and get them to, I don't know, disrobe. I, I can't remember the exact thing because we covered it when we covered, this is literally three years ago when we covered his bit oh, yeah. with uh, the Skeleton Twins. And... Um, <laughs> But we, 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 at the same time, we said, look, just because he became a scumbag in 2020 or 2017 or whatever, doesn't mean he wasn't apt in his description of Howard and Beth's relationship. He still did have something of value to say. And again, mm -hmm. likewise, it doesn't mean that Drew doesn't have some good points in this video. I think yep. there's don't people shouldn't get us uh, confused that we think he's he's just the devil or he's a demon spawn and fuck him for fucking with Artie. We're not trying to play protect the baby gorilla. We're simply saying that it's the context of well, you want me on celebrity rehab, and then like a week later, two no, a couple months later, you hear there's an, a report. Uh, and they reported it on the Stern show. He said, I refuse to treat Artie Lang. And yeah. then he gets an offer to do celebrity rehab. You know, he yeah. gets a solid yeah. offer, like later in the yeah. year, whatever it was. And he asked her, Howard, what do you think about, you know, what do you think about doing a reality show about my life? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> Howard was like, uh, it could be interesting. He's, he yeah. knows it would be a train wreck. He just doesn't want to mm -hmm. say it. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and, and I do agree with I do agree with you, what you say. I mean, Drew is clearly a smart guy. He has a lot of experience around addiction and treating addiction, but he can be all those things. He can be a great physician and also an exploitative, uh, you know, uh, star fucker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Stones wrote about it on Goat's Head, Goat's Head Soup, guys. <laughs> right, yeah, that, that you it, we were in a hospital and to find a oh, it's a residential hospital, but it's a hospital and to find a hospital the, that allow a camera in there is amazing. Not just camera, but to 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 trust that we could run to to let us bring our own program into their facility and use their license and all of the liabilities that come along with that was amazing. And, <laughs> so that was really the the, the the long and the short of it. I didn't want to fucking have to insure this myself. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Smith, who's on Celebrity Rehab and now will be on Sobriety House. She uh, was in my movie, Private Parts. I Beautiful girl. I didn't, and I, yeah, I was shocked <laughs> to learn that she was hooking because she wouldn't give me the time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he took a page from Norm Macdonald there, dear. He was a huge whore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, what timing. He's like a Swiss watch. Day on my movie at all. And she seemed to blow off everybody. She was so aloof and so unobtainable. She's and waiting yet, for the money. Here she was. You could have banged it from the cash. The, 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 <laughs> do you probably... find yourself ever get attracted to a patient? I mean, she you, is a you, gorgeous no, woman. No, you do, but, but it's, you sort of, you, you're using, you're using yourself and your body as sort of an antenna to read what's going on. So you're there for the patient. Right. And so you learn that if you're having a reaction, it means something about the patient. But how, how, how that. are you not but like every, you can't, how are you like very, <laughs> she's you very, <laughs> she's very seductive, isn't she? Uh, she wasn't. Those whores with, are. She wasn't with me. She was not. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh that's great <laughs> instead we're listening now to wilding's fucking miami vacation or whatever his his tanning of techniques down in miami fuck it's, off do you know what it's almost like someone has went because this is the, the I, we used to listen to this show live we used to listen to rips of the show that were live there was yeah. no editing it's almost None. like someone went in afterwards and and met, played with the levels to actually and and mixed it. Yeah, he knew. I, I think he he was so good. He knew the pace of the sh show so well. He knew how far to put his head in to the mic yeah. to get the right, you know, p 
pitch or no, volume you, you or mean impact just, or whatever. Just, like just out, just out of range, like that. The way the way Kinnison, when he would scream, he'd back away from them, like he'd knowing away, how loud yeah. his scream would be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, look, I think he was. I think he was just masterful at doing. He was that, just dropping in those little. <laughs> Completely. Did I did I not just play the video? Not the video. It was audio of Eric the Midget doing phone sex with that Brandy Taylor. Oh, and then at great. one point, at one point, uh, Howard goes, "Well, first you first you got to start off these phone sex calls, Eric. You know, because maybe you need a little help. You should first of all describe what you look like. So why don't you start, Eric? Well, I'm three foot five. I heard he goes bye. <laughs> <laughs> Split second, like he just straight in. <laughs> Savage as fuck. That's yeah, great. It's a kid in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> what we said. Do you know what kind of an asshole you have to be to be in yeah. a wheelchair and have two thousand people in concert boo you? <laughs> <laughs> like the guy in Philly with the car yeah. parking space. Yeah, Jesus. I uh, the coldness and the anger and stuff was such. I was digging into that with her. No. I mean, he, it was just you know so intense. You, you say your antenna go. Do you ever put your antenna inside of them? Oh, though? that's no, what I mean. Like no. well, you know, not like every other guy, and your antenna's not your yeah. dick. Because, because <laughs> when I said she's a whore, Doctor Drew looked over at me and went like this. <laughs> no, she was hooking. She, she was, was going but to the he moved his eyebrows like I'd like a piece of that. <laughs> 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 And Fred, <laughs> the drop. <laughs> one of the best drops, that one. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> I don't think that's what he was saying. Well, that's what he said. All right, so so now the new show, which I will be watching. Yeah, I, it's intense. I, I, my favorite show well, they is... Really fuck, they almost die in this movie. My yeah. favorite show is Celebrity Rehab. <laughs> and now I suspect my favorite show will be Sobriety House, especially when I saw that Andy Dick somehow gets in on this. I know, Andy comes in. And Andy's... You uh, like to take the tough case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Andy had, a, has his, had his meltdown that was very public. Yes. And he went into my hospital, where I normally work, looking for me. And I actually went and saw him there a couple times. But I wasn't there. I was doing this Sober House thing. And he was like, well, you, I came, you know, you got to treat me. I'm like, Andy, I'm, I'm not here. He goes, well, I'm coming to the show then. I'm this like, is a perfect All vehicle right. for Andy. He wants to be on TV I mean, yeah. badly. And, and this uh, is the only way he'll stay sober. He's sober. He's sober right now. He's doing great. He's actually here in town. Is he? He's yeah. been sober before. And it's, uh, then it's, yeah. you know, he goes back and forth. It's he goes back to him. cock. Now, one of the things oh. I learned about in Sobriety <laughs> House is yeah. that Stephen Adler, former drummer of Guns N' Roses, go to Sobriety House. The first day he starts using heroin right there. They find oh. needles on him and a bag of dope, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's pretty disappointing. He couldn't buy urine. Well, does that, are, well, let me ask, ask does, that, does that surprise you that someone first day in the sober house? No, was, because no, I think just, Gary said it here yeah. once on the show that, and, and this was sad, and I don't know that I disagree with Gary, that he seems like he's beyond repair, you know, that guy. But, but I, I, you know, it's he funny. he hit rock bottom and didn't, I mean, he had a stroke, right? That's why he talks But you like talk that. about a guy, you see, Dr. Drew, I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think it's bullshit that he's a compassionate guy, and I think he feels compassion for what I went through with my father. But what that guy went through as a kid, man, that story mm -hmm. of being 11 years old. and Thrown and, out on the street. Oh, my God. But yeah. you that know is, what? That is like, that's mind-blowing But to you me. know what? How do you ever get over that? That story was a little, his, like the way you see how the disease takes advantage of things. Right. It turns out that story was a distortion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I talked to people, that his family and stuff had been around at that time, and they went, What's he talking about? When he was 11, he came home one day and went, I'm going to live with my grandparents. I don't like you guys. Right. They went, okay, go move in. Oh, so that was bullshit? It, 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 it was his perception. <laughs> he, he, he it was a distortion. Yeah. Uh, and, they're, and it's probably somewhere in between. They probably finally went, ah, get out of here then. Fine. Yeah, like, most, when did he ever say that to an 11-year-old? You say No, most, I know. I, I agree. Jesus, I've known a couple of 11-year-olds. You would have fucking sent them to the moon <laughs> as well as send them to their grandparents. Fuck, don't get me started on that. But um, I, I didn't watch the show at the time. I remember it was available for, well, there was YouTube clips. There were YouTube clips, but also uh, at, the, at the torrent sites were, you know, still showing that kind of shit. And I remember, I think I downloaded one episode and then I felt, to be honest, I felt dirty watching it. Because, yeah. um, it, it, you know, if you... If you watch nothing but a real AA meeting or an NA meeting and listen to people tell their fucking stories, their, their war stories, it really is beyond depressing. It's, it's like an encounter, any kind of encounter group or like survivors of sexual assault or whatever like that. If you've ever seen documentaries and they show clips of people telling their stories who, you know, they are, they're fine with that, having it on film. 
it's it's not a pick me upper in the morning. <laughs> it really isn't yeah. something that you can uh, just kind of shake off and watch an episode of, you know, Full House afterwards. Yeah, it's just people. Uh, look, we all have that. I uh, we discussed this already, but I suppose we all have that curiosity, more sure. curiosity, especially when it comes to celebrities, people who we know. Yep. Um, I did find it interesting there that Howard said, you know, he kind of, we get into this kind of, what's the real idea of this show? What's it really about? Howard says, this is a great vehicle for him, for Andy Dick. Yeah. Well, hang on. It's re, it's rehab, isn't it? It's like, like, no, it's a great vehicle. He's going to get 150 grand and, and great exposure. And hopefully he'll get sober as a, at the end of it. <laughs> like, so what really, and, and, and I wonder why is, why is Andy Dick uh, chasing Drew to get into rehab? Why isn't he trying it anywhere else? Probably because he can't afford it, maybe. I'd say he can't afford it, first of all. Uh, second of all, like, because we, you know, we think about, you know, stars, like movie stars, TV stars, and they get, you know, even back in the day, they still would get 25,000, 35,000, 50,000 an episode. Dana Plato, we talk about her. She was on different strokes for however long, and that was a hit show. But, mm. you know, that money is, you know, even with inflation, that doesn't go very far after certain things have gone out. If you go on long enough, that well runs dry. And if you become an, an addict, um, if you don't get any more work and you're living the same lifestyle, it can dry up really quickly. Look at every friggin' basketball player who retires, you know, and, and doesn't become a pundit. They usually end up filing for bankruptcy. These huge McMansions, they can't afford hammer MC hammer with that fucking mansion of his with the gold yeah. faucets, Jesus H Christ. So, um, with some of them, like Andy Dick, uninsurable, most likely no one wants to take mm -hmm. his, his just bad behavior made him unemployable. But, you know, and would have happened, the same would have happened to Chris Farley, but he died before it could happen. Yeah, I, know, I, I never understood the appeal of uh, Andy Dick. I, I know he was in, he was on that show. Um, news Radio. Uh, news Radio with yep. Joe Rogan. Yep. But I don't know what else he was on after that. I, I just know him from his appearances on, like, I'll never forget that rant on, on Fitzsimmons' show about mm -hmm. Howard. Yep. I mean, that was just unbelievable. <laughs> that was legendary. Did you um, hear the follow up on on Corolla's show where he tried to, you know, apologize to Stern? No. Uh, the, if you haven't, seen, I'll I'll do, you can find it if just search okay, to check yeah, out I'll, the keywords. I'll, I'll and he's the gist of it is, you know, I really didn't think I would get to Howard. I'm like, no, he knew he would get to Howard. He went yeah. after every salient point. And the actual condensed red is really only a matter of minutes. But the, the real Fitzsimmons interview is probably, I don't know, 40 minutes divided into a couple parts. And um, he went after Howard hard. And Howard, the funniest part is Howard arguing with the tape. Yeah. Shadow boxing with the tape. And just, yeah. you know, this is a guy who you had on Sirius for free and yeah. wouldn't pay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you valued him enough to come in and do work, but not to pay him. And he was stupid enough to do it. He goes, oh, I thought it would be fun. Uh, no, you probably were desperate at that point, Andy. That's the yeah. sad part. Like he probably preyed on your desperation as he does with every one of his fucking employees. And you took him up on it instead of saying, no, I'd rather get paid somewhere. I'd rather just stay clean and, you know, whatever. And he got built up resentment and, and, and the, what happened happened. Mm. So. And unfortunately for Fitzsimmons, it was it was bad for him too because he didn't defend Howard, even though Howard exactly. said, "Not that I needed defending, but you didn't feel the need to defend me." <laughs> what? Well, yeah, I, th I think what was happening was that Fitzsimmons was laughing and probably uh, being uh, probably uncomfortable. Yeah, and uh, Stern heard that and thought, "Oh, this is funny now, is it? This is the kind of tacit uh, approval or consent that you're happy with but, what's being said about me." <laughs> that's precisely what it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I and my my job, just you know, is to stay with his truth. Right. Doctor Drew, so. you say most heroin addicts, it comes from child abuse, you, mostly you, sexual abuse, you, and uh, also some form of child abuse. Am I correct? In, in what I say is that if you have bad enough addiction that you need to see me, there's nearly a hundred percent probability of child some high, some kind of childhood trauma. If I, what is it, Gary? You've been trying. No, to No, no. I just I just want to say you keep calling it sobriety house. It's sober house. Sober house. I'm sorry. I, I want it's exploitation house. It's exploitation house. I, it's 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 flag, flag, flag. I this, cannot this one, wait to watch. Remember, it. this is out now. They're they're moving out of the world. And guess what? As soon as you move out of the confines of a safe hospital, people relapse. That's this a skeevy house. Man. And so that, some is that shit the house? Goes that, down. Some the shit house in Hollywood. Some stuff happens with her. I can't hear Dr. Drew. Some stuff happens with Amber. Wow. Wow. What? 
I don't know. What, what do you mean? I, fuck you, Drew. Jesus. Teasing. Promo. It. Teasing. Wow. Promoing it. You fucking dirt bag. Will she live? Will she die? Well, you just have to tune in to find out. <laughs> Honestly, if you just yeah. put little graphics on there and made this into some kind of bumper, that's exactly what it would be. Rid- yeah. Just dis- just despicable. That's that's the flip side, guys. He might yeah. care, but <laughs> stop fucker, stop fucker, stop fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, guys. Sex or drugs? Sex. Oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Close ups? And drugs. I think about she it. She blows yeah. Adler for heroin. <laughs> That's what she does. She blows Adler. She she I have to say that I originally, when I heard the concept of uh, celebrity rehab, I thought it was, as Artie says, complete exploitation. But I started watching the show and got hooked. I really. Well, it, it's it's, you, it's, well, it's why. develop a great yeah. compassion though. It's, uh, she, 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 did you see that? So she has to correct herself there because she knows what she said is so stupid. She says, oh, I thought it was uh, exploited, but I then I really enjoyed it. It's it's great fun. Oh, but but, but uh, uh, then she has to go back and qualify that and say, well, you you develop great compassion. Well, it, OK, here's my here's my problem with the, what she said. First of all, she, she's a 78. Let's 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 be honest here or 80. <laughs> uh, but she's definitely in the in the same ballpark as Howard. <clears throat> um, she if it can something be exploitative and compelling. At the same time, if you feel it's exploitative, can you really be entertained by it? I I have a hard time. If I think it's something like this, something's exploitative, I refuse to watch it. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So so what she's basically saying, I know they're being exploited and I don't give a fuck. I don't care because it's it's entertaining. I'm sitting there with my my, my bowl of friendlies and uh, I'm loving it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Jesus Christ. She's double scooping. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you're, exploitation, rooting, exploitation but works. You're rooting for these people, and you, you know, you really care about them. Robin, if you found out that fucking uh, uh, what's his face, the guy from uh, Guns N' Roses, Stephen Adler, yeah, if you found out he died, would that affect your life really that much? You yes, feel, you feel I would bad. Be hurt. You feel, already, you okay? There's, you're right. She realized she just shit on this guy's program. Who, you know, they want maybe for all we know, Buckwald has a fucking piece of it. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Possibly, and then. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh God, I got to walk this back somehow. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, people might die on there, but God, it was some fun. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was, it was unforget, unwatchable, unforgettable. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the, what I already said is also the truth. When we talked about this earlier in the, in the, in the previous installment, I believe about people that have passed on and you, it mean, it means something to you. And, and, yeah. and other, other people I've talked to over the years and asked, I've, they say, oh, I've never felt, uh, you know, sad for when a celeb dies. I'm like, well, okay. I suppose if all you do is if you're only into literature, let's say, hmm. let's say that's all you're into, but your favorite author died, you wouldn't feel upset. You wouldn't get upset over it. That you're yeah, not going to get any more books, you know, or you're yeah, going to say like yeah. the guy that wrote all this is, is complete. <clears throat> like there'll never be another, um, short story from so-and-so on some level. It seems a little inhuman. It does. I have, I have a friend who, uh, was a huge fan of, and is a huge fan of David Bowie. Mm-hmm. And when, and I am too. And when Bowie died, I have to say, cause what happened with Bowie was he released a record on a Friday. Yeah. Black star, his last album, which. Mm-hmm. Just, I, I remember spending the entire weekend listening to it. I probably listened to it seven or eight times over the weekend and absolutely was blown away by it. I couldn't believe it. It was such a return to form. And then yeah. woke up on Monday morning and he was dead. Yes. So it was t- two days. And it just had a huge I- effect on me. And I remember speaking to my friend and he was just like, well, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, he, and he, he has, he loves them, has all the albums, you know, adores them, but just. Oh, really? Yeah. What, did, so you, did, people, did you did you did you did you suss out that it was just him? Be he wasn't trying to he wasn't taking the piss. He literally no, was like, he, he, no, he's just he, like, he yeah, it's just like that. Whatever, it's just like that. with everything. If someone dies, didn't know him, didn't know him, don't care. Yeah, the music's great, and everything. But for me, I I I'm not like that. I I, I when Gary Shandling died, I was I was very upset over that. Uh, mm-hmm. A few people who just and it's always people that you kind of probably went through your formative years with or loving so especially things you probably really liked when you were 14 15 16 certainly 
but even feel better. Do, you don't even like do, do you Rod Stewart's kid a little bit better than when he was in here? Absolutely. No, don't you I, like I, him a little better? I, that kid's a jerk off. Uh, that kid should be doing. Do, do you understand this? <laughs> this guy, Artie's heart and feelings are so big that it's like busting out of his chest all the time. You right. them, I do. I know how that Artie this hurts, guy is. and he hurts much more yeah. deeply than most people. He is people. so yeah. sensitive. Right? Everybody and hurts so, sometimes. No, no, but you got a big, you got a big thing with that. And, I know, but uh, listen. He's uh, hiding behind the jokes. He's, he's uncomfortable with this. We're gonna move on. Hiding uh, behind the jokes. What yeah. a great book too. <laughs> Uh, Daniel Baldwin, you never could fix, right? He's he's, he's actually hug. sober as far as I've seen him a couple yeah, times. Yeah, because he left since. after two weeks. Yeah, yeah, is Mary was... Carey sober or is she having Mary, a Mary's in Sober House. She is. You know, yeah, she okay. comes back. She's straight. <laughs> Remind me to pixelate this one. <laughs> <It's a great laughs> actually, if we, sh if, if we have it on, uh, on Patreon, it won't matter, but um, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I'll throw a pair of tits <laughs> in a serious talk about addiction. Mary, here's the deal. Two things happened to her in Sober House. One is, poor Mary. Mary she, the uh, porn star. Yeah, she leans in finally to me because I'm on her. I'm, I'm, I'm telling her to change things. And finally she leans in and she goes, oh, you, you want me to change everything? I go, yeah, Mary, that's right. I want you, and she goes, I'm not sure I can do that. I said, okay, well, that I can work with. But right. I'm really, well, you need to, if you're going to stay sober, all this BS has to change. Right. And she's in that kind of contemplative phase where she kind of wants to, kind of doesn't, you know, so. Who is the hardest patient you ever had to treat? Was it Gary Busey? <laughs> ever had to treat? Yeah, I'm talking about the celebrity. It, in the celebrity, yeah. Uh, wouldn't it have to be Jeff Conaway? Jeff was rough. You know, Tony was a little rougher for me. I, I've, Tony I've a sort of I, it's, women are a little tougher for me. A little t I have a little more sensitivity to them. And so Tony was doing some of the same stuff that Gary was doing. Right. And it was it was a, it was it, it it's hard for me to carry that. I mean, she was word. downplaying her addiction. It, it was just hard. It's hard for me to drag people into recovery. And, and, and the do you old... ever get tired of it? Don't you feel like you're dealing with little children? In a, yeah, in a yeah, sense? yeah. I, I feel for you sometimes. It's like it's like oh my god, they're like. So you're trying to commiserate with your feelings of having to deal with Artie when you don't actually deal with him whatsoever? Yeah, this is this is real passive aggressive here. What he's what he's what he's doing. He's he's actually. Well, I think he goes to say he says something like, oh, "You feel like slapping the shit out of them or something," you know? He's clearly yeah. talking about Artie. Well, that's two things here. First of all, they crouch. They crouch. Sorry, crouch. Crouch. <laughs> I'm the seventy nine now. They crouched on Artie for content, including mm -hmm. when he was in. You know, the, you know, Artie's had a rough two thousand eight, and this is a review of his year. And oh, da, 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 yeah. da. I made it a Howard TV video. Which, if I were a Howard TV crew, I, I suppose I'd have to do my job. And I'm sure they kept a lot of the really bad Artie stuff off. And in fact, I, I think I've heard a couple of them. Uh, you know post Stern show explain how the really bad stuff was left way on the cutting room floor, like pictures of him, you know, sleeping at the desk or, you know, have with paraphernalia around him that they didn't want out there so they mm -hmm. could protect him as much as possible. But in a situation where you have to cut an episode about him knowing what he's going through and you can't do a fucking thing about it except quit. But if you quit, you think someone's not going to pick up the slack and do that goddamn video anyway. So I, I see where they were uh, conflicted about it as well. Yeah, and of course, look, look, he already knew that his um, Howard already knew that Howard likes that out of control, you know, personality, mm -hmm. and uh, already played up to it. But then, of course, um, that there's that's a that's a double edged knife, and uh, yep. the consequences of of uh, of that are what happened. He he became more aggressive. He consistently had to lie, as all addicts do. He missed yep. days of work, and now this is the uh, this is what happens. And that's what they're throwing back at him now. That calling him a liar, saying he missed days, he, you know. And, and they're basically saying that he controls everything already, and they they're powerless to 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 intervene or to stop him. Well, that's that's where I get also a little upset. No, you guys have control of Artie. Like he's he, he's out of control. Then you get rid of him and you maintain control of your own show. That you're too pussy to do it is your own fault, yeah. and that's where you have to take responsibility. Uh, so he never ever did act contrite, Howard. He never oh. did uh, say, you know, look, this is you know, I have to I have to share some of the blame. The only time he sort of hinted at it was when Artie went after Sal. At the end of the uh, first the blow up with Sal, where he threw the mm. CD at him, and he goes, "You know what? Uh, maybe I let this get too far. Maybe, maybe you let it get maybe. too far. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. But that's about as far as he's ever going to go. I mean, if he's not going to admit on, um, uh, like a daytime show, I never if he, that I say he said the N word multiple times, then yeah. he won't admit to anything ever. No, 
I, I, do you know what I love? I love the, when the Howard TV guy says but how um, Howard TV, <laughs> Howard announces on the air. So, uh, you know, we're, 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 Howard TV is winding up at the end of the year and, uh, and they're all sitting in the, the room, filming the, 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 yeah, the filming going, what? Yeah. And then they they go down and ask about it. Like what? What? Like stop and, they, and he goes, oh, do, you know, I'll tell you about it later. And he just like walks off. Yeah. And then he says, no, 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 we're gonna we're working on something else. And it walks off again when they right. confront him again. Doug Goodstein. Mm -hmm. and he never ever actually looked him in the eyes and said, I made you're the done. decision. You're finished. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. And so if you got like he <laughs> he needed Allison to divorce him because yeah. he never would have left. Yeah, he never would have pulled pulled the trigger and said, "I got to get out of this." Little children, yeah. get you just want to shake them and go get a fucking grip on. But right. you can't because they're big. Right. It's weird. You, you, like, can't, you can't, and that's and, you, and when you really are feeling, you know, like the stuff that these guys are dealing with, you you, you don't want to go there. But I'll tell you, the, were the, you ever a user? No, of drugs? I'm not. I'm not, never. I'm not. You never tried pot? Nothing. I, but thank God, it's just not in me. It doesn't seem like anyway. I think right. not good. But do but you the, feel that you can't really relate because you don't have any? No, I I in can it? because in fact, people are in recovery. Recovery always tell me it's weird how much I understand it. They don't understand how I, as a non-recovering person, have such a deep appreciation of this condition. I don't know. I I I don't know. It's like the right side of my brain is overdeveloped. So I can just sort of tune into that. Oh yeah. But Are I'm you attracted to, to that question. woman who works with you, the blonde? I'm attracted. Shelly? to Shelly. Yeah, I like her. Um, I mean, as a person, I mean, I you know, I I am super duper happily married. My wife is hot as can be. When I did love, you meet your wife? Uh, in. Uh, uh, 86. Oh She's still hot. So she used yeah, to be yeah. hot. She used yeah, to be hot. Still. Oh, still. still. <laughs> That's low. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You don't go after yeah. wives. Oh. Yeah. Your, your yeah, wife I'm, is super hot. Yeah, I'm super happy I was married. No I didn't. Big, was she big, three when you met her? Big. <laughs> no, she's. she's... Yeah. He's angry. He's already he's angry. He doesn't. He's pissed off at Drew. I think. He is, and it's not a situation where someone's being antagonistic towards him, so he's not going to get angry. But like, I mean, I mean, he's not going to get violent. But if it was a Teddy situation again, or like someone going out, like even Gary, I'm sure Gary, when that fight happened, Gary was like, "I'm only doing this from my office because if I get in yeah. there, it could happen to me." And I think it would have yeah. at some point. It reminds me. This is like a much calmer, t you know, less intense version of the Lou Bellera incident, where where Artie just absolutely went after him uh, yeah. uh, you know really got under his skin and then when when lou stood up and went you know it kind of went up to try to kind of confront him he'd say i'm just doing my job lou i'm just doing yeah. my job and that's what Artie's doing here he's he's his his fallback is always going to be look it's a joke i'm just this what i'm paid to do so yeah this is the only thing i'm here for yeah yeah. Well, the, 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 the thing about the Amy Fisher stuff, first of all, I found that incredible. That, that was, that was one of the absolute low points. You have this mm -hmm. person who went in, did her time for attempted murder and, uh, whatever violent, you know, I mean, she didn't kill Mary Jo, but she tried to attempted murder, at least yeah. whatever the charge yeah. was. And then we're going to have her on. She's said she become a, a porn star. She's released a porn tape that they've ridiculed on the air, but we're going to do an interview with her. And, uh, then later on, we're going to have her husband who was in the porno with her judge some beauty contest, whatever I like, <laughs> yeah. could not. I think he was of the, the mind, like, I cannot believe this is how fucking desperate and low rent we are now at this point. Artie in that conversation made it very clear that he felt terrible for, um, what was Mary Joe, Mary, Mary Joe Buttafuoco. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. he thought it was awful. And, uh, uh, I I think he was I th I he was disgusted by that and I th sure. I think he I think he was clearly re repulsed by uh, Lou Belair and I don't think anyone everyone was he was an awful and then do you remember they did a celebrity boxing match with Joey Buttafuoco yes after the, like this is the bottom rung of entertainment folks this is it, it really, really it's the surely right. network level stuff. Well, yeah, and and but then I love Bowie at the time, and this is off topic, guys. But you know, we have but this happens occasionally. Um, Bowie, when she left one time, she came in for the interview, and she left in like five minutes because she yeah, Howard was discussing right. the porn. I remember, and our, and then um, they so they bothered to have her in. They said we'll have her in. Then when she leaves, Gary gets his big balls and says, "You know, when she was leaving, I almost said, Fuck you, skank! Fuck off! Get out of here! Like, who the fuck are you?'" Uh, and I'm thinking you had her on shithead. You're yeah, the idiots. 
Yeah. You booked her. So she was clearly fine to be on the show. Um, and if you couldn't do anything, I mean, if you couldn't suss that out in the pre-interview, that's on you, <laughs> monkey. So they, they cut from that interview and then went straight into a live read for Ashley Madison. Like that's what yeah. the show was back then. <laughs> it was. That's a great reference. I forgot that fucking, that scandalous company. What a, what yeah, was that one? Awful. Life is short, have an affair. <laughs> That was their tagline. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. My my favorite was when they had these tryouts, and there was this Timothy Judd. I think his name was. He co- he gave in a, a tape of himself, like B. Howard Stern, for a day, and he says, "Are you?" He said something like, "Are you?" He was from England. He goes, "Are you broke? Uh, you know, impotent, addicted to drugs? You know, if you're not, well, you should be, because that's all the fucking commercials you love here on the Howard Stern show." Yeah. <laughs> like, he was like, "Broke, <laughs> broke, philandering, addicted." Dr- dr- like drug addled assholes that's they've done their market research and they've figured out that's just the sort of asshole who listens to this show <laughs> it's a perfect observation i'll see if i can find it for you it's great yeah it, it gets better with age it's now awesome. that you're more famous Keep do, you find, yourself do you find women uh come on to you more uh, of course yeah, you're a movie star. no but yeah. that was more i think i'm too old now for that I really, no, none of is that good. is going on no amber didn't throw herself at no, you at all no, 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 no. <laughs> those bazooms i mean my god no. do you ever see the patients naked in the uh, well, I have to examine it, physically examine You, you physically examined Amber? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, how was that? <laughs> you did not. Did you physically Better than Gary Busey. Busey. Yeah, and Busey, too. She was completely new for uh, No, no. What was your life? I love it. Hold on, I gotta set that back just a little bit. Uh, let's see if I got that right. For example, uh, no, no. What was your life? No, but Drew was. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, ah. What do you wear for your... Uh, what, My what, antenna. What is Amber uh. wearing the examination? Uh, I can't... I, I think we kept their clothes on because the cameras were rolling. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah, cameras and, rolled constantly. Do you have but, to check but, the breasts? Yeah, yeah. What, what are and, you checking for exactly? For masses and things. I mean... But how do you found them around no, no. the implants? No, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my it's, God, that's fantastic. Guys, don't make a mock, really. <laughs> yeah. What uh, You know, you I know what... I bet you didn't. I love that Gary came, uh, that already came to my defense. Also. I, yeah, I, I can't believe what you're telling me. This is fantastic. What I didn't realize you had that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to examine uh, Amber. I really would. Oh, I mean, to give gracious. her an exam. Do you have to check her anally? No. 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 Vaginally? No. no. I, I avoided all that. Oh, boy. God. Hey, don't you have to see what's doing in there? I, I, I mean, if Don't you have to put that special uh, monitor on your cock? I can see what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> See, funny thing was, or, or Howard was going through all that questioning, and already with Brilliant. one line brings the funny, but yeah. Howard couldn't. Yeah, Howard couldn't. Howard was coming off like uh, he's been as creepy as Jimmy Savile there, the way he was talking. Pretty about much, you have to probe and you have to examine, and there's nothing. It was almost like some kind of uh, autopsy he was describing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> then, it, no, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was about as se- it was about as sexy yeah. as an episode of Quincy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, meanwhile, yeah, you're right. He came up like, you know, come on in, kid. Dude, this van, don't worry about the window situation. This van yeah, is perfectly yeah. safe. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, and Artie, you <laughs> were just like a fucking, you know, Artie really is. He told a story on the Nick and Artie show. I think the clip is called Pizza Crust Homer. He went, he was playing whatever, like baseball. And um, he went in and he was finishing a pizza slice and he had this, the crust in his mouth. And the coach was giving him all kinds of shit. He's stepping up to bat, and the coach is like, "All right, what are you doing? You can't, you can't swing when you're eating. What the hell?" And he goes, first pitch, home run." Yeah, right. <laughs> he goes, "That's one of those <laughs> moments where you you wish you could just film it and watch it again and again." Just to, yeah. yeah, he was kind of like that at his best. Yeah, yeah. I, my, <laughs> Come my on, two lessons monitor. Two Come on. <laughs> so you have to be very professional. Enough. Sorry to yeah, get yeah, silly. Yeah. I mean, I'm their doctor. Are celebrities oh, harder? Yeah, are celebrities hard? Worse. Thank you. Are celebrities harder to treat than, uh, let's say, people who are just G- in the regular? Uh, Generally, celebrities tend to be a little have more mental health issues, more trauma. In fact, I just wrote a book about this. They, they're more sicker generally. And there is a sense of entitlement and specialness and all that has to go away. And I, I treated some movie stars early in my career. We sort of let them have special accommodations and things. 
disaster. Right. And so in other words, when treated, Artie goes to reha his rehab and he goes, the rooms are no good. They skeeve me out. That's all BS. And he's ch it's BS. Yeah. He checks into the Satai yeah. in Miami. And, you know, here's Teddy, the deal. see if there's a Rich Carlton in Portland. Here, heroin addiction. <laughs> you, you, heroin addiction has a worse prognosis than most cancers, than the vast majority of cancers, in fact. Right. And, if, and if he had cancer, he'd want me to airlift him anywhere, and he'd take six months out of his life. He'd take right. the chemo. He'd do it. Right. The prognosis is worse with because heroin, the, the, and yet society, people won't do anything because for it. Because the won't, society they won't take is, the time to, won't take the time. The society is not as compassionate to a heroin addict as they are to a cancer patient. You're right. And, and so, but why well, are you compassionate to a heroin addict? So why do you be like compassionate? But there are people who are. Who understand this? Mm -hmm. Right, and you well, got to stay around that. Right. Those In other words, what do you care what people think? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we're talking about the room of your rehab, not people's compassion. I just want a fucking room with a clean rug. What do I mean, Drew. Jesus? Uh, Doctor uh, uh, Gordon wants to speak to Doctor Drew. Go ahead, Gordon, quickly, because Doctor Drew's a busy man. Yes, he is, and at 50 years old, the guy's in incredible shape. Uh, Howard, well, by the way, happy birthday, Howard. Thanks. Got to get this guy to take his jacket off and see what he looks like, man. This guy's ripped up to shreds. All right, Fruity, calm down. Dr. Drew, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> You weights and stuff. I do. I, I, have, a lot of, I have weights in my garage, and I, I love. I've been lifting weights since I was a teenager. And what do you do? You run? You run a little bit, and I lift weights. I like so lifting weights. The psychiatry behind that is what? Like you don't want to be raise the nerd. my endorphin levels. You don't want to be the age. nerd. Uh, the nerd who can beat somebody up. That's no, I was. I was an athlete in high school. It's okay. That were, you were, you a, were you a star football player? I was player? a football player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? A star. A little tiny prep school. I mean, please. Right. I was going to say, what team were you? But my kids, my boys, play football. Were there black guys on your team? Yeah, yeah. How many? Not that many. Well, that's not a team. Dominic Barber, go ahead. <laughs> I kind of love him. Yeah, Howard isn't even acknowledging that. Look, well, what team sport was Howard ever? Howard ever exactly. playing his life? Jesus, chess. Yeah. First of all, happy birthday, Howard. Thank you, Dominic. Um, do Dr. Drew, do you agree if it wasn't for Howard's openness on the radio for the last thirty years, all these shows probably never would have happened? Because it's like with Howard brings all these celebrities on and they talk about all these things. That was really the beginning of celebrities opening up on the air. Yes. I, I don't know about celebrities. So that's nonsense. Christ's sake. It's go look up. Nonsense. Go look up the Dick Cavett show uh, with Dick Van Dyke talking about his alcoholism or Parkinson in the in yeah. the uh, in the um, in the UK. Yeah. With yeah. Um, Richard Burton discussing it. Fantastic interviews. Even though yeah. the Dick Van Dyke one, it's it's clearly Dick's using information that's completely erroneous on, on in terms of uh, alcoholism but it's still quite refreshing to see these huge massive stars discussing it openly absolutely yeah that's a really good interview the dick cavett one um i'm trying to think is there any other ones uh the richard burt one is, is really good as well the uh there's two uh christopher Plummer at, at the turns christopher Tur Plummer and then brian dennehy both discussed it on george strombolopoulos yeah. show uh at like yeah. three minute clips discussing what you know what the theater used to be like you know going out and getting fucked up yeah. uh and what the kids now they go and get on you know they go to gyms and stuff remember what we used to do and then talked about <laughs> christopher Plummer saying basically i was saved all my drinking buddies are dead except for uh rich you know <laughs> richard harris maybe at the time mm -hmm. or people Peter O'Toole, I think Peter O'Toole's still kicking, and he said, I love to eat, so whatever, I'd be drinking, but I'd eat first, and that might have saved me, and it's true, you do eat, but for a lot of people, that's their saving thing throughout the night of boozing. Yeah, certainly. Bread. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly, a full stomach can uh, kind of attenuate the worst of the, 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 the spike of alcohol, but uh, the Brian Dennehy one is really good because he kind of, he I think he talks about a look that his son gave him. Mm -hmm. I think he talks about I was I was opening a bottle of wine or having a beer and my son looked at me a certain way and I was like what's up and he just looked at the bottle and looked at me and walked out of the room and I had a moment where I realized he, he saw know. himself through the kid's eyes and now that he said oh, like what's he gonna yeah. you know, what's he gonna do next like how's it what's yeah. gonna end like what, what's gonna be the culmination of the evening now what 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 version of him are we gonna get after yeah. a bottle of wine or two bottles of wine and yeah yeah, it's a really good interview. So this whole idea that Howard is some kind of fucking trailblazer for reality to give me a break. This is just more of this horse shit. Dominic, that he yeah, well, that's like the greatest, everything. greatest interviewer ever of all time, all this bullshit. Yeah, and Dominic absolutely licking his ass. Where did that get you, Dominic? You still got dropped. 
<laughs> and you st- you're and you're still <laughs> Your mansion on Fire Island is now, you know, you, you got a fire sale on <laughs> Fire Island. <laughs> what? Here's one thing I'll say about Dominic, and this is to anyone listening, everyone listening. Yeah. And, and next time you ever hear a, a listen to Howard Stern show, I will bet anyone, any listener, uh, any amount of money that Dominic always opens every call with. Well, first of all, he's every single call. He says, first of all, it's a bit like Howard and the. Uh, quite frankly, or what is the other thing, in a sense, or whatever it is. In a sense, yeah, absolutely, yeah. In other words. Dominic had this, Dominic had this thing where he just says, first of all, at every single call he calls in. Well, I'm I'm no different. I I I overuse exactly and absolutely. Well, so, well I'm yeah. a guy. Well, guys, because I agree with my co-hosts when it, when I do. There's always so many words. Yes, yes, precisely. Uh, all of a sudden, I'll do John Hurt instead. Um, but either way. Yeah, it's Dom. Dominic was just a big ass kisser, and then in the end, and we could probably get him for an interview actually, because he's so you know, but he's so out of the uh, out of touch of the show. But I did enjoy a lot of his calls. One of them I used for a drop. Yeah. He said he believed that Howard was gay. Like <laughs> I don't believe your test results because you know you hang out with Ralph all the time. Yeah, yeah, I think it was probably a bit of jealousy there. But uh, I think uh, Anthony Cumia at one point said that he got a call from Dominic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was representing um, his ex. No, 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 no. He got a call from Dominic. Re- this is relating to Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics oh, Anonymous or something okay, to make okay. amends. Oh, really? Because yeah. So um, he, I think he showed up at his house. Or um, Kumia said, "Jesus Christ!" So it must have been to... something to do with the divorce because he oh, represented yes. Kumia's ex-wife. I've... Yes, and apparently was pretty vicious in the whole thing. Yeah, and, um, yeah. it just reminded me that. Uh, that Kinnison appearance on the Carson show when he goes, uh, hey, uh, do you know a Martin, Martin Mitchelson? He goes, no, he goes, no, he goes, oh, you would have done, believe me. You would have, uh, you would have really remembered this. He goes, so by the way, I'm a big fan of your work now. <laughs> Cause he's talking about the guy that handled his, his wife's divorce. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to here. I'm talking to Yoda here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great appearance. I was so glad uh, the Carson uh, people, the website, decided to upload a proper version of that because for the longest time you had to put up with a VHS copy. But he goes and sings, uh, Are You Lonesome Tonight? But he has that recitation in the middle like, where he's screaming at the girlfriend. Yeah. And, uh, and it's great. Carl and the Outlaws singing back up. It's a really good appearance. Home run. You know, I just saw last night that Carson, that channel, uploaded an interview with Judy Garland. The only time she ever appeared on on the Tonight Show from 1968. It has to be. That, I'm surprised actually they have it because the, a lot of those archive those archived shows from the 60s are all gone. Yeah, well, it's up there. It's on the on YouTube now. Oh, I'd have to check that out because she was something yeah. else. She, yeah. She's she's towards the end. She's uh, she's definitely kind of a bit shaky, you know. Hmm. Her body, her, she's kind of, uh, she's not comfortable at all. And, uh, I certainly under the influence of something, sadly. Yep. Yeah. Poor, poor Judy. But real, Reality, yeah. r- real, real in media, Howard led the way in being real in a broadcast environment. Thank Fuck you. off. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, any other questions? Bullshit. Hi, Audie, this is your shot. This is the guy. What? All right. This is not the guy. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's not interested in me unless I'm doing. Yes, show. he is. Uh, George, go ahead. No, Gary. I felt. I, I felt very. I, I, your book really moved me. I got to tell you something. It, 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 it affected me. Me too. Yeah. Go ahead, book. George. Uh, playing with, uh, Howard and uh, Artie. You know, this is one of the best gifts you can give Howard if you, if you can complete this course, man. What course? Artie. Oh, you treatment. mean the uh, treatment. Treatment. treatment? Yeah, yeah man. Yes. Well, just, that just, would be nice. Call, Howard doesn't call care, a sponsor, man. dude. <laughs> see, <laughs> he, he, Artie, see, look, that, he just said it outright, and it's he, you. Th- you think it's a joke, and we're making a big thing of it, but it's absolutely the truth coming out of Artie's mouth. Yeah. He knows Artie uh, Howard doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, that's why he's been giving him all this leeway to do this because if he did give a fuck, he'd have been fired a year earlier. Hundred mm, percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's all coming out now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, today, it's time for me to talk. Oh, 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 I'll go right now. No, <laughs> you hang up on her, I'll go to rehab right now. How's that sound? No, you're not going anywhere. Marianne, oh, go ahead. Come on. Dr. Drew, I think Howard's been doing celebrity rehab for the last eight years with Artie, like Tom Nick said. And I'm wondering, what is Artie using that he's a blabbermouth? Because he's got to be using something because either some days he's super quiet and other days he can't give you a word in edgewise. I'm getting I, accused of being on drugs when I'm asleep. I, and then being fucking talkative. 
feast of famine with you. It's All right, Dr. Drew, do you have something to say? What are you say? doing to make yourself an annoying... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. I Drew. can tell you... Daddy, his... you should get a life. People care about you. I care Dr. Drew, about people, Dr. Drew, people, but go not ahead. you. I, I, have, I, was, I looked at Artie very carefully. His pupils are not pinned. Right, thank you. There's no smell of alcohol or cannabis. And I don't know if you use any. Do you use Xanax, those kinds of drugs? You don't look like. I them, don't right? like those no. benzo drugs. And so I would say right now he probably is clean right yeah. now, okay. just by my eye. Yeah. The fact that Robin told him to shush three times already is an indication that he doesn't know when to chime in. He may be detoxing a little bit. I've been bit. doing this fucking Maybe. show for eight years. Don't tell me how to do my job, you slob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Irritable, agitated, discontent. <laughs> it's the show, Doctor. The I've show noticed, is a drug. I noticed Artie is a little more talkative. Is it because yeah. he's going through withdrawals? Some, but some post cute withdrawals. Because I got maybe. funny shit. Yeah. <laughs> Funnier than you, whore. Uh, <laughs> this is missing from the show. Someone yeah, who would tell getting, her to go fuck herself. Yeah, he's getting good. This is getting funny now. It's starting to just pepper the show with these these little zingers, isn't he? I love him. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. It's been three. Don't years. shove your head in your gravy. Your gravy sucks, probably. Bring your gravy in. Here. Well, Doctor Drew has inspired a lot of good conversations. Oh, good. You've really gotten the ball rolling. We learned that your show, Celebrity Rehab, is a hit. That it will be back again, won't it? Celebrity Rehab. You know, again, I I, I imagine it will because right. VH1 likes it. But again, I don't get involved in the casting like or it. anything because I can't come up to I come up to Artie and go. Does anyone Artie, die? You need treatment, but hey, wait till we heat up, and I, I can't be involved. Are with you that paid at all. well for Celebrity Rehab? I know that these cable shows don't pay a lot of money. Yeah. Is I it mean, true? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It, but it's good. It gets you yeah, out there. It yeah, gets you in front of the public. You like being a celebrity doctor? Um, yeah, it's fun. Right. I like you know I love people. I it's yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, I love people. <laughs> Only when there's a fucking camera running. Shit. Yeah, out. pretty pretty much. Really do. I'm like <laughs> almost like too much. No, 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 it's true. And and uh, almost too I, much. I, you want to be famous and and you're exploiting uh, people to get there. And I, I, I'm i going to say you make 100 grand an episode. How's that fucking? No, not even close. Oh, yeah. not even close. Well, what's your deal with the DVDs no, and everything else? Zero. Oh, zero. I believe Do you them. still have a regular practice? I don't practice. believe them. Yes, I practice every day. I don't believe and, them. And, you better no, practice because you suck at it. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, oh man! <laughs> oh, he's I, when, when listen when we started this one, we said he was in prime form. He stayed clean for this. I don't know if it was by accident or by design, but yeah. what a move! Like what an yeah. absolute move to just make sure you had all your fucking yeah your Faculty, your faculties yeah. working. Yeah, exactly. Jesus, because because there's nobody. The only time, twice, uh, already had Joey Diaz on um, his. Nick, like the post Nick and Artie show, Nick and Artie show. And yeah. then he had him on um, for his own. He did an interview with him, I think, on Joey's podcast. I can't remember if he was on the phone or something. And they canceled each other out. Artie, because mm. Joey's a way better storyteller than Artie. And Artie's fantastic, mm. but Joey's a step above and he's more freewheeling, more improv. Like he's he's just, mm. a, a, in my opinion, a, 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 a funnier version of Artie. Mm. Um, in, just, just my opinion, guys. And... Artie almost, first of all, he didn't listen to him. So it was almost like Artie was competing with him and he didn't realize he didn't have to. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, Joey appeared on, on his, one of his last ever episodes. Uh, yes. Artie's, uh, so what was it called? Uh, halfway house or something. Halfway house. Yeah. And it was yeah. really bad. Artie was, was really bad. A bad give and take. Cause he was too just too off the walls and he, and he didn't realize yeah. you you can just let joey talk you're good uh he he was he was kind of comatose already in those some of those shows especially the mm -hmm. one with gilbert and it was sad sad to hear it was the one he did with joe matteris i think it was i can't remember it was about goodfellas or something and i was so pissed at that guy for letting it go and putting it mm -hmm. out there because already was clearly fucked up or yeah drunk or something and he just d insisted on releasing it anyway i would if i were a friend i wouldn't have put it out and yeah, not it yeah. wasn't a term of like the lauren michaels thing let's uh put it out there and show Artie how bad he came across to uh you know maybe sober him up no no no, don't do that just don't don't put it out there there's way do him a favor yeah. do him a huge favor yeah just but yeah, tell him about yeah. it and say this this is no good i'm not releasing it so yeah, yeah. 
dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old joke. That's an old doctor joke. Look how sensitive he is. He's like, he's going to hurt my feelings. He's so mad at you. I'm on he's drugs, but I'm talking. No, he's not. He's now, not. listen, I wa let me ask you this. He's already admitted that he changes the average treatment for the TV yes, show. He does. He, he says, I can't kick one, somebody out. That's the one place I don't I have creep. the teeth I usually have. Yep. Well, that's changing uh, it. You, no, yeah. So you let somebody stay in there who could affect the treatment of somebody else in there because of the TV Artie, show. Artie, you're attacking yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Well, yeah. He's you attacking know what me. He's doing. Yeah, he he's not attacking attacked me. you once. Do you know yes, what Artie's doing? How did he attack By saying he read my book and liked it. I don't like compliments. Why are you saying he's attacking the man? Why are you attacking him? Because I feel that he came in here open. We're we're celebrating his show that we enjoy, and you are you are. I enjoy the show too. Yeah. Does anybody die on the what, show? Artie, why are you angry with no, Dr. No Drew? No one dies. Damn. I mean, not why. Why are you angry with Dr. Drew? What did he do to you? Nothing except put this out in the open that people, uh, you know, are uh, heroin addicts. No, I wanted that you know to be a what secret. it is, Artie. Artie again. Is I want so... to pack my car with heroin. Artie is so pissed that every man he is. and every doctor who comes in here, he's hostile to. Get a I think what we're missing out here, and because I, I know, because I listened to the audio, audio like the the show audio, um, for for you know the purposes of just when I didn't have access to Howard TV, um, he mentions like what what would happen if one of your daughters was a heroin addict? Like, what would you do? That's uh, is it? Because he just said I yeah. want to pack, he, he, but he said I want to pack. I would pack her car with heroin and get her um, get her uh, arrested. And say because it, uh, it, it we didn't have it in the first part, and it wasn't in this part yet. So I think they've edited it out from that section of the Howard TV. Oh, okay, maybe perhaps, yeah. Because perhaps. the reference is is that's in reference. What already just said is in reference to that, and we didn't hear that. I have a feeling it might be coming up now. Oh, it may, uh, maybe, maybe it's out of order. Maybe they or moved something. it around. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Anyway, maybe. I checked that because. These everybody has let him down before they even do anything. That's not true. He That's can't true. trust you because yes, you want to be on TV. Right, right. And anything I do can't be trusted. That's Suppose if, even if I want, if I even if he had to pay me to come see me in in the that office, I, I can't trust you. Why yeah. is that yeah. true? Because that keeps him from getting close to you. Yeah, it's a good, it's, it's again, a good way, It's a good reason. Yeah, yeah, but addicts, addicts, you're no that good because you're on TV. But add, the main the main obstacle in treating addiction is getting somebody to trust. That's the right. biggest right. thing. Why don't they? Trust. Because, I trust you. Like I trust my. Why agent. don't they trust? Because <laughs> they've been so profoundly violated in a vulnerable relationship. You think he's had sexual abuse? I don't. I bet Dad was a little physical. Dad was physical. Yeah. Was. And, and then and then he, what, let, now, then he violated now we're by fight. then he now violated by by dying. I mean that's that was ultimate my sort of the was, betrayal. No, he was. Not to try to leave. He left. This is where Drew completely yeah. loses the plot. Yeah. That's that's just. That is so unethical. It's so unprofessional. It's shitty. Bet, uh, and the way he does that little, I bet uh, it was a little bit of crap. How do you know that? You don't know what you're talking about. You never talked to any of the family members. You never knew his father. You don't know any of this. There's also oh. no instance of Artie, because Drew's a listener of the show. There's no instance of Artie ever talking about being sexually abused by anybody. Yeah. No. And, um, and he, I or mean, physical abuse. I mean... I think he mentioned maybe his father was aggressive with aggressive. his words, certainly. Yeah, but it would have been it would have been you know like a corporal punishment type thing, not a necessarily. And and he was to to hear already talk about it. Like if 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 his father was abusive, I think he would have wrote about it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. He left you. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah. My father, he betrayed My father you. wasn't physical. He wasn't? Okay. <laughs> no, I did. I wanted But he was the face. one man you could love safely. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, he was my father. Right. What am I going to tell you? No, but I, you uh, doesn't you mean know, he was he, perfect. I know. Uh, look, if you read the book, you could tell I don't think he was perfect. Yeah. I don't Not, think the you know guy what? who did what my he did. My father used to time. finger me. There, I admit. Aww. Okay. Anyway. I, you wished. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. How do you see, not you? I couldn't see not perfect Happy in the book. Birthday. That happened to me. That happened to me too. Howard's father fingered me. And you know what? And you know what? He, he, here's the deal. He, <laughs> Artie's dad saw Artie is perfect too. I know. It, no, it was no. A, it he told me I swung like he a told, He told him he was perfect, and, and it was a mutual told, thing. It was mutual. Yeah. Yeah. And now, and so that's the, so bad. Dad, and, now, like, and now he doesn't have that drug anymore. And so he replaces so, I, it with heroin. I wouldn't put a drug. It, Isn't that like a drug? A father who tells he, you you're perfect? I, I have a hard time conceptualizing it that way. But it's it's a deep emptiness and a deep betrayal and a deep sense of difficulty trusting because you'll you'll have that happen again. When one parent will tell you you're perfect and loving and perfect, 
and you tell them they're perfect. It's a bond. It, it's too much. It's yes. too much. It's, it's, it's the neurotic, as I used to call it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so, my okay. father screwed up. No, no, he didn't screw up. No, I, no, not, uh, no way. He loved no, his no, kid. No, and listen, I, I remember watching that baseball game, that Yankees game that you went on the field during. I mean, yeah. I, I mean that that. This, this stuff takes your breath away. It's a very human story, man. Well, it, it, it is. Very it's, good. I mean, it, it's it's the truth. It's a unique thing. But I think, you know, it was a different time, first of all. We weren't in these politically correct times where, you know, we had amazing shows like Celebrity Rehab to tell us how to live. <laughs> <laughs> and... That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Do you know what's happening there, right? Yeah. Artie knows Drew is full of shit right there. Yes, what he says. absolutely. Because yeah. Artie do, uh, Drew does this several times where he goes back as a sort of, a, um, no, I'm I'm the real deal. And I'm yeah. going to justify that by by this. This is my Trojan horse for this whole setup is I'm just moved by the story of your father. He's trying to use that repeatedly here. And Artie's yes, not yes. having any of it. No, he 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 smells bullshit. And the other Absolutely. thing is the story the story he tells about his dad and at the Yankees game. Now, of course, you we you and I don't come from baseball culture. I mean, I, mm. Canadians do love it, but I I certainly didn't. You, most European guys I grew up, we was it was football. I mean, a European football and everything else after. Yeah, like and, NBA is shown here. NBA isn't yeah. shown here, but there's, NBA is big here, uh, and football Super Bowl is always big here. But baseball World Series. No, no one ever talks about it over here. No, it's either football or rugby for the most part, and maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe snooker. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, like that the story. But even still, you don't have to be a baseball fan to 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 read the story and hear the story about Artie's dad throwing him onto the field, and and yeah. you know, at the end, like it, just like at the end of some triumphant concert or something like some concert that yeah. really went well you know and then he you know the kid's scared like being in this fucking <laughs> field where all kinds of bedlam is going on and then the dad mm -hmm. meeting him on the field which it is it, it's not something that would could ever ha possibly happen in 2023 for a number of reasons but mm -hmm. it was something you could if you're of a certain generation you could totally relate to yeah 100 you know? percent. it's like it's almost like there's something out of a movie Yes, it's absolutely. A, yeah. It's very cinematic, I think. And you could make that into a movie uh, as part of a, mm -hmm. you know, if as a vignette or something. Um, sure. Either way, I, I love the story. And the, the, the follow up to the story is something like uh, they're on their way home and he says, I don't care what your mother says. You're not going to school tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? It really is good. Uh, you know, he was the, he was a kid from the streets who was doing the best he could with his kid. All right, I, I, I let's go to it. Chris. Let Chris have it. But uh, what if I go to rehab, yeah. okay, yes. and get kicked out? Because mine won't be on television. It'll be a real rehab. Right. And what if I get kicked out after a few days? <laughs> what happens here? Go to another you one. You have to go to another one. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you guys can't keep dictating my life like that. No way. No way. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, sounds yeah. like somebody's scared You're of failing the his urine test. No, 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 no. If I get kicked out of rehab. Yeah, but you can make it so you get kicked out. That's so, right. And then what happens? Then you got to go to another one. What if I get you kicked out of that? So you got to go to another one. What if I get kicked out of that? Go to another one. No. Keep asking me. No, no. All right. <laughs> it's like who's on first? Though. You can't get out of reason. I, I don't know what that is, but it, it's it's exhausting. At what point? What do you think should happen? You know what I mean? It's At exhausting. Artie, it's exhausting. Would you let now. me go? Yes. Audition yes. for a sitcom. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think should happen? We I don't know, Howard. I just I really go. don't think I really don't think that. Uh, I'm I'm as fucked up as everybody thinks. I no, am. you are. I really uh, read your book. I'll oh, fuck off, Howard. You are. If he, well, there's nothing wrong with him. Where you are fucked up, you well, he does his job. Well, then he's not fucked up. Which is yeah. it? Yeah, which is it exactly? Yeah, you know. And and if he is fucked up and he's there, you you're clearly betraying the fact that you don't give a fuck either. Howard seems to be in in in, uh, in possession of all the facts now, doesn't he? When he talks about, oh, you believe in God, you believe in a higher power, you're fucked up. But then when something yeah. goes down, what happened? Yeah, he's doodling. He, when stuff really happens, I was I was doodling. But yeah. now when, I you know, when it. there's, you know, there's no skin in the game, perhaps. Oh yeah. And I know everything. Yeah. This is no different than I'm your boss. Oh, what about money? Ah, Sirius is your boss. Yeah. Don't yeah, talk Sirius to me. Your boss. Yeah. I yeah. don't fire people. Uh, you know, I'll get someone else to do it. He said that. <laughs> he, he did. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I read my book and everyone should read it. Artie. But Can I, I be honest I, with you? Artie, I really don't I had no think idea how I'm fucked as up you fucked up as you are. Oh, all right, look. No. This stuff, it's in my past. It's in my past, Art, man. But it's you're not. still doing you heroin doing now. You I'm doing not it. doing heroin now. You were doing now. it as recently as 19 days. days ago. All right, well, like, how long before you think I'm okay? 
about yeah. five years. Yeah. All right. Well, then our contract is way less than that. But I'll keep tabs <laughs> on you. Don't worry. This is this is. You're, you're, and I'll you're, touch you a lot. You're uh, exhausting. Can you finger me? <laughs> he's exhausting. He's exhausting. He and yeah, his it, sister's it's, exhausted, and his mother's exhausted. Yeah, and it's and it's it's and a very you know powerful I, thing. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 and I see in celebrity rehab, all the people around these people are exhausted. My right. sister told me she uh, she dreamt uh, last night she was a muffler, and she woke up exhausted. Fred, where's the rim? rim but, no, seriously, rim your sister Please is stop. exhausted. I know. Okay, everybody's exhausted around me. They are. Well, they're relaxing pretty good at that shore house. Oh, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> now, that's that's him being a dick, just throwing yeah. money at the situation. But yeah. I, I was going to say, everybody's exhausted. Artie's certainly exhausted. He sleeps in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> He's never late for work. Yeah. No, no way. Always with the shore house. my car with heroin. I'll give you the keys. What is his behavior now? What is so there you go. That's another like I guarantee that was in the past of the well, you know what I'll do? Um, I will um find the audio, isolate it. Like we'll yeah. isolate that the segment. I'll go through it when I one of these days and I'll listen to what's missing and mm. I'll see if I can clip them in somewhere or put them in at the end. We can discuss them at another point, maybe. In this yeah. case, it doesn't matter because we just discussed it, but um if there's anything that's crucial in there that I think we should have been in there. I'll uh, attach it to the next episode, the wrap-up show segment we do. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Perfect. Is he embarrassed or what? What's going uh, it's, on? It's like Curly Howard's uh, entered his body. I'm paid to be funny. <laughs> You're paid to exploit people, and you do that well, and I'm oh. paid to be funny. All right. Okay. Come on. Uh, Come on. This I is like a... Dr. Drew. I got to tell you something. I admire what you do. I would not have the patience. You got the patience of a saint to do this. Uh, to me, you're dealing with two-year-olds. Oh, you're a saint. Well, to, to some extent, you are. Yeah, right? it is an amazing process that you saint go through. Saint Drew. <laughs> <laughs> I think this this is now where Artie's just like fuck it, you know, he's just yep. sick of the, this whole thing now. Fuck it, I don't care. And oh, yeah. uh, this is where Howard goes into full. I'm gonna just talk like Artie isn't in the room. Um, yep. Just Therapy in this whole mode. like treat him like a baby and almost a kind of close to dehumanizing him at this at this point. The way they talk about him completely. Yep. And Drew, I get Dr. Drew Pinsky, God bless you Thank for what you're doing. You. And, I, I, and I love the show. Thank it's you. fantastic. He takes these people who are at their depths of, of, oh, of they're in depravity. Trouble. They're in big trouble. And he tries to turn them around. Some he's successful with, some he is not. As you saw, he worked with Artie today, and it got him attacked uh, and, no, I'm, I'm, and, and, and belittled. I'm, and yet he kept a calm demeanor. He's used to this kind of thing. Do you ever just want to punch some of your uh, uh, patients? Um, I used to get that way a little bit. Uh, 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 not anymore. What if someone I, came I, at you? Would you defend yourself? Yeah, or yeah. Would you try to like just not? Well, I, to, I would try not to because I mean that's my job. You know what I mean? Right. But, if, but if I'll defend myself, I have to. But, yeah, if somebody's going to punch you, you got to defend well, yourself. Yeah, and there are ways to do that without, without being aggressive. Fighting them, yeah. Yeah. You know Taekwondo? You know any of the uh, martial no, arts? No, I, I wish not. I did. Well, I'm if sure I get on Celebrity Rehab, I'm not going to. gave me some boxing lessons, though. A bunch yeah, of them. That's good. Yeah. I'm not negotiating. All right. But if I get on Celebrity Rehab, I'll be the first one to try to punch. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm not <laughs> negotiating. All right. Can hey, I gamble? Hey, what about Rodney King? What about gambling? No, gambling's no good. Gambling's no good. Really? Why? Well, why is that? It's the same part of the brain that activates your disease. Say that mesolimbic reward apparatus. that. I think he's correct about that. Uh, without mm -hmm. having studied it, I, I I would say that's a that's that's bang on. Because yeah, it's I reward mean, yeah. receptors. Like uh, exactly. Pull the pull dopamine. The, uh, yeah, dopamine receptors. Yeah, you got the um, you got the you pull the trip. You pull the 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 lever, or you press the button. You get your hit. Exactly. And and if that's just if you're constantly uh, I suppose upregulating that uh, pathway, and you're not killing it off. Mm -hmm. uh it's it's always going to be there and you you won't be in control i just Makes meant sense. to add, just meant to ask do you know any do you know anybody of any of friends or co like acquaintances let's say that uh are teetotalers as a result of having to cut it off like just being completely off booze and do they do they have triggers that they can't do anymore like they they associated drinking with sports or drinking with you know uh any whatever behavior that they had to stop in addition to drinking just to keep themselves sober i knew some people when i was much younger who just didn't drink at all and um i found out subsequently that one of them certainly just had a really bad experience one night where he got very aggressive and i just i haven't seen him in years but i know he just it wasn't even an option for him and he used to go out drive everywhere drive to gigs drive people home and he was he was a great guy but uh he seemed to be okay with it um incidentally i know of someone who 
was a, a profound alcoholic um, and he this is a crazy story but uh, he had a sponsor he did AA he did the full thing and he had a sponsor and he met his sponsor for uh, a walk in in the city mm-hmm. and as they're walking he sees this old bar that he used to uh, frequent and he said I know the guy in here he owes me some money right I'm just going to go in and the guy the guy the sponsor himself was an alcoholic ex- you know an alcoholic but recovered sure and he and he said no 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 we're not going in there we're not and he goes look now I know this guy in, in question he's very gregarious kind of guy he's very kind of he's a big character mm-hmm. and um, anyway an hour later the two of them are drunk mm-hmm. the sponsor and the the guy sad so that's really sad so the two yeah. of them in 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 an hour were brought down by um just a moment of weakness and mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's a it's a such a destructive thing not just alcohol any any kind of uh yeah like uh, alcohol is the only one that comes to mind like because it's the most common amongst people yeah. I, i've i've ever known um and so readily available obviously one friend yeah. in his as an undergrad had to give it up before he finished his undergraduate degree because he was hitting it so hard the doctor i think he might have had some medical condition that ex- made things worse anyway uh okay. he wasn't diabetic necessarily or anything but uh, he the doctor said if you want to live to graduate you're going to stop drinking because that's how hard he was hitting it. He was just partying way too much. He lived on campus, um, you know, no eyes on him, you know, with a bunch of roommates that they like to drink. It was a bad scene. So when he, but I asked him years later, I go, look, I don't want to I hope it's not a sensitive topic. He's no, I'll answer anything. And I said, does it bother you to be around people drinking stuff? No, because uh, it was, ex- it was laid out to me in as plain English as I could have ever wanted. And I, once you make the decision, you've made the decision like it was the right decision and uh you you just hope people don't ever have to get to that point where i did you know it would be nice if i could have controlled it but i know myself i can't i can't go and socially drink anymore yeah because yeah so being able to like clint eastwood a man's got to know his limitations (laughs) so If the incumbents gets going. He's overeating. He's gambling. Yeah, yeah. He's using so he's still using heroin. Sa- he uses he, he, cough syrups. Sex, he uses cough syrup, what, yeah, is the, what is the thing with cough syrup? What's that about? Uh, it, it's a it's a dissociative. It's a drug. It's yeah. a drug. Yeah, it's it's a like drug. You, high, yeah. you got to use lots of it. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, drinks I'm at the point where I would I couldn't drink enough to get high. Right. But I, Subutex I, is a, not a good idea. Well, Subutex if for people you know for people that are down and out are going to die. I wouldn't if you have opiate addiction. Never would I treat you with that because right. you, it would affect your ability to function and stuff. Right. And if I'm an, as a doctor, I could not practice medicine on Subutex. So right. my my question to my peers that love Subutex, I would say, well, why is it we we treat ourselves differently? We treat our patients because ourselves we go abstinence always. Right. Is the so, overeating also an addiction? It's all part of the it's same. It's all stuff. part of the yeah. same. Let me, if you were void, a drug addict, if one of your daughters was a drug addict. Oh, you're right. There it is. Uh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, why? Okay, we'll we'll go into it. Let me play it out first, but. Would you suggest she do celebrity rehab? Oh, okay, this is a different one. Um, it's an excellent question. I I would have them. I would not prefer that. Okay, but if that would motivate why not? them, because it's not the same environment as real treatment. I would prefer. Well, why? So that's worse than real treatment. It's better so than I mean, nothing. Is what it's you're better saying. than nothing. If if they were only partially motivated, I'd say fine, do that. Whatever whatever motivates you, you to get involved. You'd with say the to thing. your daughter, yeah, oh, go yeah, on yeah. television and yeah. and let it out. I yeah. bet you Rod yeah, yeah. Stewart was. I don't believe that for a second. Going on. Bullshit. I I don't believe that for a second. No, no way. And then he what? will will go into the wrap up show where Artie expounds on it and in a very straightforward, like really perfect way. Yeah. But w- w- what's he got to say? He can't say anything otherwise because he's, no, he's God, no, not on the air. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, what do you say? God, God, no, no I'd never have them yeah. on there. But the, again, the <laughs> earlier clip, I, I thought that was the one where you'd say, I'd pack my daughter's car full of heroin and, and let you get taken, busted. And yet, he, he already said he'd have to be in possession of like a million pounds of heroin. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're you're referring to something that, that I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. So um, it, well, yeah, it wasn't yeah. in this. It's, it's, again, it's, it's just one of those stupid the, things they cut out of a Howard TV episode out. to make it fit whatever. But meanwhile, this episode goes an hour, eight minutes. I don't think they were under any obligation to cut that out. It's a strange one, isn't it? It is. I, I don't know who makes the decision to do that, except like they, they really, I understand making little cuts here and there, but why that? Sure. You yeah. know? So, 
be sure. wild, eh? Probably. Yeah, I mean, because he was giving it to Rod. He didn't show up on Family Day. That's one thing. No, his no, kid. Did. No, no, he didn't. Rod did not. <laughs> his <laughs> kid desperately wants to be famous like his father. It doesn't think of But he, also, he, he also wants his father's attention. All right, yeah, okay. listen. Well, you know, Drew... and the guy who had the worst job ever was that comedian you hired, man. I could not imagine going out in front of Because, you know, I'm a comic in clubs. And I that I thought the guy did a good job. And I love that he pissed off Rod Stewart's kid. Yeah, there was oh, some right. It was funny. But, I mean, how'd you find that guy? What, was he a, an actor? He doesn't do that. No, I'm not. I'm just, he's, he's just yeah. a doctor. I'm just so you don't, doctor. you don't care at yeah, all. He's a hired hand. <laughs> no, no, I'm doing, I'm... <laughs> Man. Oh, Christ. It's just, it's it's locked and loaded constantly. And the hits went, keep on coming. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's like at being at a target shoot, like a, like a shooting range, but your gun is like right at the target. And you yeah, either you can't you can't miss the target's that yeah. big, yeah. and he's just, pissed off. I mean, he's Artie's really not happy here. No, God, no. And and he, he'll take it out like he, as much as he can in this. But then, in the wrap up show, when he gets a little more serious <laughs> about it all, then he really like uh, that that one. When we play that one for you guys, God, you will love that. Because again, <laughs> a lot of the wrap up shows, I would put them up on my channel, but I stopped just because I got fed up with having to upload and lose channels again and again. It's still up for mm. some reason, probably because I don't uh, uh, I don't uh, upload anything to it anymore. But um, so it's just kind of disappeared amongst all the Vietnamese people putting up six Howard TV videos and a bunch of gaming videos, you know, to get <laughs> people to their sites. <laughs> don't ask me why that happens. But I guess they figured out it was a way to do it. But um, anyway. Doing the doctor. Do they run it by you as a doctor? No. Look, we're gonna. No, Doctor no, no. Drew, uh, no more love line for you, or uh, no, I'm still doing love still line. Doing still it. It's, I'm doing the guy named Striker. On it. uh, it's on you know K Rock. How's still that going? It's going, going well. It's going Striker. Yeah, that's still yeah. a big money maker for Doctor Drew's empire. Of course. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, radio is my my main source of money. It's, yeah, it's how I that's how I make my living. Do you do patients? You still do sex advice? Yeah, yeah. But I do see patients every day. But it make it allows me not to worry about the business of medicine. I just do medicine because I like doing it. What do you think of these colonics? Let me switch off Artie for a second here. Robin is, it's it's a nightmare. Well, Artie was doing colonics to get off drugs. Right. No, 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 to get healthy. You're addicted to coffee in your ass. And, and made it to Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew the yours. question is, you guys are now, this is something that I didn't know at the time. I, I believe I had read it, but... Uh, beforehand, but didn't associate it because at this point we didn't know Robin was had a tumor developing in her body that she wasn't treating. We w there's people that have speculated she knew she had some problem and decided to go holistic because one of the cancer cures back in the day was coffee enemas, one of the really? bogus cancer cures back in the day. Wow. So people like Steve McQueen. You know, because he yeah. from all the they they theorize that um, he, from all the race car driving, a lot of those cars used asbestos for a flame retardant yes. material, and that got in his lungs because he died super young. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what he he did the whole nine yards. Andy Kaufman was another Andy one. Kaufman, he had lung cancer, yeah. and he went down to I think it was Mexico, um, and had you know did that that's that that bogus Slide like of ceremony, yeah. With the chicken bone or whatever, and the uh, it uh, was it was yeah. I mean it was really uh, I mean that was illustrated in the Man on the Moon movie. I didn't obviously yeah. there's no video footage out there, but it was something that I've seen in other in actual other things like documentaries and stuff like scams essentially. Yeah. And um, do you do you think she knew at the time and was and was just hiding it or denying it possibly? I do you know what what could have happened? I know that the the um, Dr. Ronnie that was all about losing weight because she was yes. on one of the roasts and she was uh, I think it was the Daniel Carver one where she was forced out of her, her um her, yeah booth yeah to sit on the couch. I yeah. think we talked about this before. I think the reason why she was actually upset about that was that she was insecure about her, her appearance and she knew she wouldn't have a desk to hide behind with, during the roast yeah i think you were saying that it was probably more to do with having the kkk <laughs> member in there but I'm, i don't I'm know sure that I'm, I'm sure that was a big part of it <clears throat> i'm sure yeah but um so i'm not sure whether the coffee i think maybe she was experiencing <laughs> symptoms uh, of the tumor <laughs> she didn't want Daniel to see that the computer monitor was not actually plugged in. Yeah, She's looking at a there. blank screen the whole time, <laughs> every time. But uh, well, she was like browsing the PF Chang's menu the entire time. But um, yeah, 
No, uh, so I don't know. So maybe she did have sim- symptoms of the cancer and she they were being, um, obviously if she was getting advice from Dr. Ronnie, they were getting oh conflated with all sorts of other uh, issues. Um, at, so who knows? Yeah, at that point you should just be getting like a tumor smoothie and, and, and drinking it, you know, at that, you know, yeah, with, I mean, with really, whatever, yeah. Christ's sake. Um, anyway, we'll play a little more. Sure. I'm concerned about Robin. I'm going right, to ask I'm you. addicted to Cologne. Here's the Robin. Once a week, a celebrity once a week, Robin is consumed with what kind of duty comes I'm out of her. I eat I a healthy you. diet. Duty comes out of me. You're fine. the one yeah. who's had the lack of it. Says Captain Metamucil Crackers, you know, 20 exactly. years later. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. Fuck you. Well, you don't eat, so you shouldn't have a problem with shit because <laughs> what shit is there to come out of your goddamn <laughs> pelican gullet shithead? Uh, God honey. created us as a perfect instrument that way. Yes, that, 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 our colon was designed to handle sure, what it handles. Sure, sure. Is this an addiction? Is impacted. this an addiction? <laughs> I, Robin looks great. She looks very healthy right now. What did he say? That God created the anus as a perfect instrument. Yes. <laughs> Howard's uh, Howard is uh, John Coltrane then of that instrument. But uh, yes, I, yes. I, I, would, <laughs> I would. He's a virtuoso. If, if, yeah. <laughs> I wonder, uh, like, he's I just like think Rish- it, like, he's like Rashawn Roland Kirk with that fucking asshole. What? <laughs> what's the idea with these colonics? Like, what's even the theory behind it? Because I, I, I'm just imagining now, like, if when Robin's getting this colonic, it's like that scene of Jaws where they cut open the shark. You know? oh, <laughs> it's like God. license plates and. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what the idea. I don't know what the idea behind the colonic is. Well, what the only time the only times you're supposed to have them, number one, is when you're getting a colonoscopy, like beforehand. Sure, yeah. They just want you clean, so they don't, you know, you know, when they're not <laughs> sticking the camera up, a surprise doesn't come out. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just a practical reason. First, first of all, but second of all, uh, they have to. I think they. I, I did it last year for the first time for uh, like just for <laughs> they they were <laughs> exploring the bowels, uh, and um, I remember looking it up and saying, "Oh, it's got to be all you have to eat." clear stuff or white stuff like white bread not brown bread no uh coffees or anything dark because they don't want the dyes or anything like artificial color to affect what the camera is seeing they want everything to be yeah. as clean as possible so that they get an unfiltered view of your innards and with her and the whole colon colonics thing colonics jesus um the colonics thing um i believe it was just anything that she suggested to her she would have done look at the fucking magic magnet beads behind her ear you know uh these wraps these these these, flying over to the west coast to get you know these uh uv treatments whatever meanwhile to improve your circulation meanwhile you're in a fucking plane (laughs) (laughs) and even if you're in first class i mean unless you're doing cartwheels down the aisle your your circulation's going i mean they there's you know they they say there's loads of people get sick on planes because of uh you know 13 hour flights and they don't move yeah. and stuff big problems can happen deep vein thrombosis uh, but yes. R- robin was getting like instead of training for the marathon she was flying out business class to california to sit in what in some machine that kind of I- I can't remember. They yeah. had already do it one time. It was some kind of, uh, it might even be what my wife had one time when she was in the hospital for, for her, her, after her surgery, there are these, um, you, do you know the, the bubble wrapping that's now it's, it's like, um, it's not the little, little bubbles anymore. The air bubbles, it's the, um, uh, inflated almost like tubes. And they, okay. they, you know, they stuff them in to fill up the, whatever's in the box aside from your product. Yeah. And, uh, it's just more practical, but you imagine those around your like snow pants, but inflatable snow pants around your legs and one starts puffing up and then the other leg starts puffing up. It's meant oh, to, it's, okay. it's meant to sort of increase circulation to the, the blood flow to the, um, to the legs. Cause you're not moving. Okay. All right. And I thought it was like a flotation un, tank or something. Un, no, I think it's like that. And until you're walking on your own, like okay. regularly exercising around the ward with the shit holds a bag stuck to you um, and an IV buddy. So I think that's what it was. But then there was also an IV, a UV, IV, a UV wrap that already was in. It was like a warm rubber mat or something and he had to rub he he wrapped himself in it she came in dr ronnie and he's like that's he fell asleep i think (laughs) and he said it was really comfortable but at the same time they said there's some dangers involved in it so dr ronnie's a whole other episode guys by the way that's that's like a the scam and a half one day we will do that she's not a doctor of medicine you know 
no. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's she's a doctor like Julia Serving was a doctor. <laughs> I think I already said the only thing, the way you could be the only way to be a doctor in this country is if you can slam dunk or remix a rap record. <laughs> or Dr. Hook. <laughs> yeah. But is it an addiction to go once a week with the duty and the tube up the ass? No, it's not an addiction. It's not you, an addiction. You it's keep sort of a sleeping in the afternoon. Kind of, it's a compulsion. Yeah. What, you to be keep... clean back there? To yeah, do people what? get this preoccupation that they're oh, dirty, there's something in them. You know, the colon, colon's outside your body right. completely. Right. Nick Manning it's, it's was not in your body. It's out. <laughs> it's a tube. That. It's outside your body. Go ahead. And it's, and it's designed. I mean, the lining is specifically designed yeah. not to let anything in it. Just, I all believe the col- that Elvis had 40 pounds oh, of duty. All, all the colon does is... <laughs> Elvis had the worst diet on the planet. He was taking pills like other people take, you know, like eat sweet tarts. And he ate like shit. And uh, he was sleeping all the time. He was nocturnal. The medication like the, he took, the, well, the side effects of some of the medications he took constipation. were, were Massive. constipation. Yeah. yeah, big time. Yeah. He went to the doctor one time. He said he had this pain in his, like in his back or in his, in his, like his abdomen. It was, it was some, some really like bloating and inflammation. And the doctor told him it was a, tra- it was a trap. It was an unborn fart. It was trapped gas. God, that guy needed a cesarean before, you know, I think he, <laughs> it was, so he, he, so he had fleets enemas all the time. She's, yeah. she's throwing that up there. Like some kind of, uh, you know, this is, this is the answer. This is why I do this. Elvis was not the picture of health, sweetie. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. God, that system. I mean, his aides told him basically, but told, uh, told the, uh, it was from the uh, Revelations of the Memphis Mafia book. They said it's eventually his body was like, eventually it's like a, a, a triumph motorcycle. You kickstart it again and again. Eventually you just kick it to death. Yeah. And with all those drugs, start, stop, start, stop, uppers, downers, it, the system just breaks down. I visited so. Graceland once and I, I, uh, they wouldn't let, they don't let you upstairs though. Where the, uh, even uh, so even that i don't even know that they do now uh how long no, ago they don't this? they never did this was in about 10 years ago 2015 but it's a, gr- <laughs> that just, it's a great tour <laughs> that just reminds me of the bill hicks joke about the uh book depository yeah. in texas <laughs> in dallas <laughs> texas where he goes you know they they don't actually let you get near the window because they don't want like thousands yeah. of tourists every year to go there's no fucking way <laughs> 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 i can't even see the road <laughs> <laughs> it's a great bit. Absorb water. That's right. all it does. So why? A, why? So people just get this preoccupation about it. She's she, not. Do you feel she psychologically feels dirty back there? They, they feel like there's something they got there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Different people. You're talking about. Ask she me. She had. She had anal sex. You asked Artie. It's hard to stay quiet while you're getting analyzed, ain't it, there, Miss? What, what's Artie on you? <laughs> she was. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that for now. Uh, any closing thoughts before we finish wrapping this one up? No, I'm just uh, you, I'm looking forward to the wrap up show now. I think that's where we're going to see Artie being more. He'll have more time to really flesh out these thoughts and to yeah. to add, to to really explain some of the um, the glaring issues here with 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 what Drew is trying to peddle. Big time. Absolutely. And uh, in, in between, guys, of course, um, we're also going to take apart the wrap up show of the hack pack. And we're going to have at that. It's a it's a it's a meal. It's like filet mignon. We're going to definitely <laughs> savor that one as much as we can. And you guys are we guarantee you're going to enjoy that one just as much, if not more so. So thank you so much, sir, for helping with this one. And uh, everybody out there, stay healthy, take uh, care of yourselves, stay cool, and uh, or stay warm, depending on what hemisphere you're living in. And we love you all. Take care. People are coming to the house. My wife is upstairs crying. I think you should tell your godfather what everybody else seems to know. <laughs> I, I want all inquiries, man. <laughs> I want no acts of vengeance. I want you to call all the heads of the five families. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>